Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Here we go, Bassmaster Live, and we are more than ready for a second day of fishing on the Coosa River in the great state of Alabama. So much Bassmaster history on this river and this particular impoundment on the liver, no, uh, river known as Lay Lake. Four classics have been held here, and the elites have never competed here in a regular season event. So we are ready for more of what we saw yesterday. Tommy Sanders here with Davey Height. And Davey, uh, what we looked at yesterday was some, some weights that we had to adjust our thinking as far as, as far as big fish go, but still some great competition. And I don't know what we have in store for today. I don't know if our guys know what we have in store for today. Yeah, one thing you learned talking to all the anglers yesterday afternoon that I was able to talk to is none of them are very confident they could go out, the ones that had success yesterday, and duplicate that, especially Brandon Pollock, he said, I really, truly don't think I can go duplicate that. Hopefully I can catch eight or 10 pounds. But he did get his good first day start. Bernie Schultz also did that. Brian New, obviously. Those are guys that you're going to have to have that good first day start, that upper teens like they had, and then just kind of live through a few days and maybe have another day like that. That's some scenes from, that is scenes from takeoff there. That just took place about 30 minutes ago. We do have our anglers out and fishing. Here's a look at the Coosa River and Lay Lake as we take a look at our leaderboard. Brandon Polnick, two-time Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year with 19 pounds and 7 ounces. Just ahead of Brian New, South Carolina, trying to turn his season around a little bit. Matt Airy, super solid. Basically, for the last four years that he's been out here competing with the Bassmaster Elite Series, Bob Downey, Jason Christie, uh, appearing uh, to the concern of all, I'm sure. Bernie Schultz, Bernie Schultz, two veterans there. Bernie Schultz and Gary Klaus, who have been fishing for four decades off and on with the Bassmasters. Let's hear from some of our anglers early today as we, as we uh, got going at takeoff time. You know, obviously this is a new day. We had a big storm last night. Uh, not really sure if the water come up or went down or anything, but you know, nonetheless, we had the lightning and that can definitely change things up. But we're gonna go out there, we're gonna swing hard and um, hopefully, hopefully learn more than we did yesterday uh, and just build on what we learned yesterday. Today we have similar conditions. We're gonna have a little less wind, which I think will be Actually a little, I mean, not as good. We had a lot of wind yesterday. I think that helped the bite. I think a, a lot of people, the weights were actually a little higher than I thought they were gonna be. So we're just gonna go fishing today and, and hope, hopefully we run into them like we did uh, yesterday. We'll see, uh, I, a lot of my fish yesterday were sight fish and I burned down pretty much everything I had uh, to catch what I did. So I don't know what, today is going to bring, uh, you know, we're going to start in that same area and mill around and catch what we can uh, and then probably run down the lake and fish a lot of new water, a lot of different stuff. I mean, we're going to be fishing everything from sight fish to brush piles today in 15 foot of water. So it's been an interesting day. Well, good morning. Here we are, day two. Um, I, I really uh, got, got pretty lucky yesterday. I pulled up on the right spot at the right time. and. Um, caught most of my weight in about, about an hour probably. And uh, I'm gonna go sit there, I'm gonna go spot lock there for quite a while. It's just a little, it's just two miles up the river here. So we're gonna go up there and spot lock down and see if I can catch a couple just to, just to get a, a couple fish in the boat early. And uh, it always makes you feel better if you get a bite early. Seven hours of coverage on the way today on Bassmaster Live. Stop to number five for the Bassmaster Elite Series on Lay Lake. So great to have you with us. Uh, we're coming to you from the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. Tommy Sanders here with the two-time Angler of the Year and former world champion, classic champion, Davey High. Ronnie Moore, Mike Such Sukon will join us uh, in a little bit here as well. And, and, and Davey, back to what we saw yesterday versus your expectations of what might happen out here. I say I agree with Jason Christie. The fishing was a little better yesterday than I thought it would be, but they had some wind in the afternoon that helped those later flights. Everyone was saying, man, we need that first hour, we need that first hour or two because the shad spawn, but it, it looked like a lot of the fish were caught later in the day, so that's a good thing. But the versatility, I, I really enjoyed watching the, yeah. the event yesterday, mm -hmm. seeing anglers, some throwing a buzz bait, some throwing offshore, top water, flipping mats, a lot of different things going on. That's go what's gonna be fun this entire tournament. And Ronnie, we look at the, at the bigger bags out there at the top of our leaderboard, and, and one thing they had in common, as, as is always the case, 
big spawner right there amongst them. And that's, you know, that's something you can't count on day to day, right? Yeah, when you have a 514 at Santee Cooper, it, it means a lot, but it means a lot less than it does here at Lay Lake. Brandon Polnick having a 514 yesterday was huge for his bag. Obviously, Brian New catching them. And we did see that. We saw some early bites from those leaders, and then we saw some late fish. I mean, guys like John Cox, Carl Jacobson, they're in the top 30, and they would be down in the 80s if their afternoon was cut short. So. A lot of late guys might catch them, but that big bite this week, whether it's a three and a half or a four and a half or a five and three quarters, it is so crucial at Lay Lake. If you get one of those over two days, you're good to go. All right, we're going to hit an over and under question once again today. So let's talk about the cut line. That's what today is all about. We got our full field fishing today. Only 50 will make it through until the weekend. So the cut is, is always, uh, you know, there's a couple of points of view. You you take the, uh, the the 50th place weight from day one, you double it, add a pound. That's going to be your cut weight. Other people see it a different way and it's and it's happened both ways so I'll start with you Davey what's it going to be Tw but 2212 being we'll, we'll just make that double our uh, 50th place weight over or under I'm gonna go slightly under mainly because several of the anglers that we saw do so well yesterday said they caught those fish sight fishing burn them down Brandon Polnick but I talked to some other anglers there were several that had good stringers that they caught the one good fish that they knew that was on the bed so I think it'll be just slightly under Ronnie I'm going to go with the trend of the Elite Series, and I'm going to say slightly under as well. We've had uh, five events this season, not counting this one, including the Classic, and the only event where the cut weight has gone up after doubling it after two days was Joey Sefuentes at Lake Seminole. That, mm -hmm. that event um, was the only time the cut went up after day one, so All I'm right. going to go with that. It's going to be slightly below. All right, I'm going to be try to reinstate myself in the Optimus Club. I'll be the one that says above. Yeah, I'll go yeah, above good. on our over and under. How about a look at Lay Lake, our playing field here. Our Minn Kota unlocked the lake. 12,000 acres and 50 miles of the Coosa River, Davey. Yeah, it's a, it's a great lake to fish. You, you look at the 12,000 acres, it's a little deceiving because that's somewhat small for a normal elite tournament. You know, the last event was about 160,000 acres of two lakes, yeah. Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. But it does fish very well, because you can see it's nearly 50 miles long from dam to dam, and we have anglers fishing from dam to dam, literally. We saw that yesterday morning in the first two hours. So uh, some, some creeks as you get on the lower end, uh, this is the upper end of Cedar Creek, but you get on the lower end, Waxahachie and some of those creeks, it's always a lot of the fishing that goes on around beeswax, where they're taking off from. There are a lot of tournaments there, obviously a lot of release fish there. But always, when you go to Lay Lake, Logan Martin Dam, the water that's released into Lay Lake right there, there's always some good largemouth and spotted bass fishing to be found there, whether it's early spring or midsummer, late summer. All right, well, we had, of course, some big crowds here. This is the heart of bass fishing country, and we had a great weigh-in yesterday. Some of the scenes from uh, that uh, weigh-in yesterday, our top 10, taking a look at right now, including Kobe Krieger, and Patrick Walters. Patrick Walters trying to right the ship. He had a little bit of a stumble in his home state. Yeah, he, he really is. Uh, I think he got a little, uh, you know, fishing memories, maybe a little bit too much there. But here, speaking of fishing memories, we saw some anglers, Will Davis Jr. there, David Gaston yesterday. Uh, we had cameras on, they were doing really well. Also great to see Bernie Schultz, Gary Klaus, some anglers with a lot of experience, and they still get up and get after them every day. Had great days yesterday. Bernie Schultz and Gary both having a couple good events in a row. Jason Christie, someone that you always have to keep your eye on. He's fifth place yesterday unofficially. Well, officially yeah. uh, yesterday. And then Matt Airy, uh, like Ronnie mentioned yesterday, the month of May works for Matt Airy. And Brian New, good to see him right the ship, uh, having an unusually tough uh, start to his year, and then Brandon Polnick, uh, he's another one, just like I mentioned Jason Christie. When he's in the top ten on day one, look out, you're going to see more of him. Absolutely. There are two guys we definitely need to keep an eye on. We'll be in the boat with six of them today. The top six as we start our fishing today. But right now, let's get out to, uh, to one of our two anglers who have been fishing Bassmaster since the 1980s, Bernie Schultz. with 16-4 yesterday. Oh! Wow. Get in here. Big old spot, jeez. Come here. Look at that spot. Hmm. Hey, bud, can you leave me this little stretch right here? Yeah, I'm going to sit right here and then I'm leaving, 
I caught everything here yesterday, Jake. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm. Well, take I a look at that. I was just about to say, let's, let's watch that buzz bait all day, Davey. <laughs> so that's what's different about the Alabama spotted bass. You don't see spots in other parts of the country bite buzz baits around vegetation like that. It's just, they're just, they have a different demeanor. I mean, they, they really, really are uh, more aggressive and they really tend to live path. up shallower than a lot of spots in other places. That's, Bernie would be leading if not uh -huh. for Bob Downey catching a limit already and climbing from 18th to 1st. Well, obviously, there a quick conversation after you catch one. You ask the fellow elite pro, uh, I believe that was Jake Whitaker, down the river just a little bit from him as he's facing. He was facing downriver. I'll concede the spot to you. It's fine, you know. It's whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. Good to see that. Here's our leader who told us he was not going to be able to start where he started yesterday. <laughs> he knew that even before his turn came up to take off. Pretty good improviser, though, so we can fire that popper out there in. Bears watching for sure. Yeah, I'd say Brandon Paul Nick is definitely one of the best improvisers we have on the elite here. Because you, you see him lead offshore tournaments. You, yesterday, you know, he said he caught several of his fish, you know, sight fishing things. And I think this tournament sets up really, really well for someone like that because I don't think we're going to see any one angler go and use even. Two or th just two baits uh, for four days mm -hmm. and, and be in contention to win here in this particular event. Looking at the water level situation and the generation schedule situa situation right now from the Logan Martin Dam coming into Lay Lake, still around 10,000 CFS like it was yesterday for the most part, status quo. At present? At, at the present time. Yep. But from early this morning before takeoff through right now, currently, Four turbines going at the Lay Lake Dam, 21,000. So double is leaving than what they're bringing in. So the bottom lake guys may be losing some water. They're supposed to slow it down to just two turbines in the next hour or so. So we'll see if that slows that back down to maybe 10,000 like the top is. Still, I think water negative effect on have new fish moving up shallow in here. It's really in and So I the uh, coming in from Logan is about 10,000 like yesterday? Yep. And to be honest, it looks like that could be the most that we'll see um, until late afternoon, 2 p.m., maybe two turbines tops. So it, it appears the lake, uh, obviously it'll start on the lower end first, but throughout should fall a little bit today. Yes, for sure. You'll dramatically see it from the narrows down. And, a, and a, it's a big deal here. And, and for viewers that, that have never been to Lay Lake or places like this, it, it sets up like some older lakes in South Carolina or that I've been to throughout the country. A lot of silted areas where flat areas in the backs of these creeks are on these points. And if the water drops just you know, this shallow vegetation, if that water drops a couple inches, those fish, uh, if the ones there don't leave, it, it's uh, less likely that more fish are going to move in. I think we had some fish move in yeah. yesterday because yeah. it had, it had uh, rose about three or four inches overnight on, on uh, Wednesday night. That was one of the biggest complaints uh, through practice and so forth in advance of the tournaments, water dropping yeah. out from under these guys, and that really hurts the fishing. The terrain here, you, you make a great, the terrain, this is not a mountainous area here. Right. There's so much flat yeah. land adjacent to the river. And just it being an older lake, uh, yeah. just the silting, uh, it's, it just, you know, especially, gosh, in the early 1900s, that, uh, you know, they didn't pay attention, a lot of attention to the runoff and, and controlling the, mm -hmm. the the silt going into these creeks and, and these coves. So even the ones that may have had a little depth to them 50 years ago don't have that now. And this lake was built in 1914, so it's 110 years old That's almost. That's incredible. It's, yep. Got a big move from one Kenta Kimura. Caught a five pounder and then another two plus. He's jumped from 62nd to fifth place. Those five pounders are key here. Palnick had the big one yesterday, 514, and Bernie Schultz, 5'7. 
Klaus, a 5'4", and Brian New with a 5'0". Wow. You, you mentioned Kenta Kamara moving up there, Suits. He's had a fantastic couple-year stretch here, getting the top 20 in Angler of the Year for the Elite Series last year, getting the top 10 for Opens Angler of the Year at the same time, fishing all nine Elites and all nine Opens this year, doing the same thing, and he's in third place for the Opens overall. So I think staying on the water is a fantastic idea for Kenta Kamira because we were seeing a dynamic fisherman when he is competing every single week. as of this morning was made his way up to fifth place in progressive angler of the year points having yet another strong season looking for his first Bassmaster victory though Bernie Schultz 18th good year for him too yeah and I love this four box uh, looks like Brandon's easing along looking for some he said he didn't have any big ones left on him there, but maybe some two-pounders, and that really looks like what he's doing mm -hmm. there now. Gary Klaus fishing offshore. Bernie throwing a, a buzz bait, and then now I think he switched over to a popping top water type bait. And That's probably one of the... Matt Airy swimming a jig, it looks like. So we've got all four... Under, yeah. All four anglers doing something different. Sonar tools like up shallow. Mega 360 is deadly. I mean, we're in two foot of water and I can see what's out in front of me. That furthest ring is set at 105 feet and I can pick up stuff all the way out at 105 feet. That's pretty invaluable in two foot of water to be able to see out like that. And see, you can see exactly how the ditch runs. You can see those stumps in the middle. You can see the grass line to our right and then to the left, how there's kind of that lighter where it gets brighter. That's a shallow flat. so you know that this right side is the ditch side. The ditch runs closest to this right side, and that left side is kind of a shallower flat. You know, out away from the grass. It's kind of a gradual, more gradual sandy bank. Good look there at Brandon's Mega 360, that's not forward facing, that's 360, which he's using that because he's in the shallow water. I use both sides, but I definitely seem to relate to this right side a lot more. You can see his waypoints. See his waypoints up, up ahead, but probably then, marking up. What's crazy is you get a up fish here, that was on the bed yesterday, and making those casts up to it. All of a sudden, then there's the ditch, the deepest ditch is on the left side. the right side kind of just turns to a blown out flat. If you think about it, you can see it on 360, but it, oh, it's not right now because we're not far enough up there, but it, it, the current comes around that corner and it's kind of just washed that out. This is all just washed out debris or, you know, the bottom, or it's turned into the bottom. I Deeper is now. Pretty much On the right, Bob Downey, who Such just mentioned, already put the limit in the live well and thus has taken over the lead at this point right now. Nothing really big for, for Bob at this point so far. Smile. Two pounders, his biggest and, fish. Decided uh, to come here and a little bit of a call, number four number three um caught all my fish here yesterday from like from like nine to ten forty five and then i left hoping to just save some for today um, and there's still some here we're not getting quite the size yet that we found yesterday but I'm very happy to have a football in the boat. Um, they're set up just a little different today. They're kind of up, up on top of this ledge. There's a little hump here. Yesterday, they're set up more like 15 to 22 foot of water. This morning, they've been up in like eight, nine. 
So I'm thinking maybe as the day goes on, that's maybe when they slide off, is my guess. Um, but you can see them on Mega Live. I mean, they're right. They'll show up right below the boat. There's one right. You know, there's some there. When you catch one, you know, they'll all sit right under the trolling motor for a little bit. So you kind of got to back off and let them reset up. But this morning they're up on top of this ledge. I'm hoping as the day goes on, maybe they'll slide off and set up a little deeper. And that's when I got my better quality yesterday was when they're in deeper at about 10, 1030. But just throwing a little minnow style bait. Um, it's about the last thing I thought I'd ever be doing on Lay Lake. <laughs> I love fishing shallow grass for largemouth. And that was my plan. It just kind of fizzled on me yesterday. So I'll maybe go try it again today, later on. But um, you know, right now I'm just kind of popping it along in the middle of the water. Just the tiniest little bait that they're feeding on right now. But when I was out deeper yesterday, I was more like, what, I guess what you call moping or the gussy technique, is what I like to call it. A lot like what I did last year on Oahe. About the last thing I thought I'd ever be doing on Lake. Really. Had a decent day yesterday and off to an okay start today, so I'm pretty happy with it. <clears throat> but my 360 and Mega Live is without it, I'm not able to dial in these casts. You can you can see these fish on 360 up on the sand right now on top. There's shadows here, and then you can see some fish out in the distance on this flat. Yesterday I was catching right below the boat. <clears throat> this morning I'm having to make a cast to them, let it kind of pendulum down, and then twitch it. Skeeter Bogues, Big Fish Alert, Cole Sands with a five pounder, 47th into our top 10. Definitely Sorry, Bob. Definitely not a technique that <laughs> I do a lot of, but. Good to hear from Bob. Was fun in it using the Mega 360 yeah. and Mega Live? Been a good morning for people who want some electronics uh, guidance from Brad Lacks and Brandon Polnick and Old Bob Downey, as our friend Mark Zahner refers to him as. Also a good morning for people who like to see uh, uh, buzz baits get crashed at the boat. That yes, was, it was very, that was Alabama took the place, spotted bass. Yes, that took the place of the cup of coffee for a lot of viewers this morning, we're <laughs> reckoning. So a good start to our day, our live coverage of the Progressive Angler of, Elite Series Angler of the Year will be going on today as well. And Brandon Cobb still finds himself in lead. In fact, an extended lead ahead of John Cox now, who has moved into second place. Carl Jockinson now down into third place. Tyler Rivette, Shane LeHue, Kyle Welcher, Matt Airy, Michael Iaconelli, Drew Cook, and Will Davis Jr. Spent a lot of time in the boat with Will Davis Jr. yesterday. That was a pretty good education about Lay Lake. It show, showed us some of the uh, little known spots here. And we'll be seeing some, some more of the same all through this morning. We'll be right back after these messages. The Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Bassmaster Live, second day of competition at this Whataburger Bassmaster Elite, and today is all about moving or staying in place. If you're in the top 50, you need to maintain your spot there so you can fish on the weekend. If you're outside, well, you gotta take steps to get in, somehow break into that top 50 on this day. With six anglers in the boat all day long, we'll have some bonus coverage of other anglers as well. Already have had some of that. Right now, let's get out to, uh, well, we've already had one visit to Bernie Schultz, and it was a fruitful one. He showed us a great, great fish catch. We've got everybody's heart pumping early this morning. Well, watch that buzz bait all day long, Bernie. Mm -hmm. Just keep throwing it for us, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, 
There we oh. go. Stay on. Stay on. Please stay on. God, it's a big old fish. Bernie, Bernie. <laughs> Glad to see you get that one, buddy. Beautiful fish. All right, baby. We're in. We're in. We're in. That's why you throw buzz bait. You call a lot of little fish. Great camera work there. Yeah, no, yeah, hats off. Hell, that's eight pounds right there, and nine pounds maybe, with two fish. Ooh, that is great. <laughs> we appreciate that fish. Waiting until the focus is just perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on the outside edge of that vegetation, a lot of the anglers talked about it yesterday. We haven't heard them talking about it as much today, but I'm sure it's on their minds. So, shad spawn. Yep. Been really good early, but uh, uh, it's doesn't pretty last good start. a um, long time. I mean, the shad aren't doing what they were yesterday. There were so many shad in here you could walk on them. I mean, it was, it was so thick. There was a lot of fish reacting to them, chasing, boiling them, blowing up on them. And uh, the first part of the morning yesterday was frustrating because they wouldn't really connect with my bait. They were, they were just almost like they were playing with the shad more than eating them. And then uh, as things started calming down, that's when they really committed to the lure. And that's it's kind of been the case this morning. I've made a couple passes over this, this stretch and haven't, didn't catch anything. And then about the third or fourth cast, or pass, excuse me, I ended up with um, a three pound spot and then a five pound largemouth. So I'm just gonna stay with it as long as I got the cloud cover. It's pretty boring for somebody to watch, but it's, I'm just back and forth on about a 200 yard stretch here of mixed grass. There's two types of grass growing here, kind of a uh, pepper grass under the surface, and then you see this water willow exposed. Well, I hope Bernie is yeah, doing some exciting us. things. Yeah. Stop boring us Honestly. with these big fish on top. <laughs> Bernie, if, please. If this is boring, I yeah. can't wait till we get to the exciting part. Yeah, I, I might not want to be <laughs> excited if this is boring. Today, Make you go sit in a <laughs> cold tub of water. Yeah. And we hooked up. Capturing my first one right here today. I gaffed him up. He ain't big, but I'm sure happy to have him. Green has got to go. We're not gonna zero. Thank you, Lord. Right there catching some of his fish yesterday morning on swim G. One more bite. Doing the same today. One at a time. Come on, baby, crush that thing. One at Six a time. Pounder. For a second, I thought he was gonna be a big one. Takes the brand was new a big one for last this pond. night, the times of Bass Live, and that he would be on today and have a camera and he said, you're the man, and I said, if I see another poor mouth practice post, we're gonna have to fight because you're in second place. And he said, a bad practice doesn't mean anything, and I, I agreed. Not a single person has career winnings Monday to Wednesday. I really kinda wanna wait until I weigh them. do on day one. Finally got a good that. day one start this year. Yeah. I'm a braid screen. Oh, Ronnie started 101st in AOI points, I think at his place got him like the 83rd. That's mm, it's a pretty good climb still, but might possibly could do it. Wow, that was great. Yeah, there. Also watching Brandon Polnick. Brandon Polnick, yeah. that was good. Okay. That is uh That was unexpected, but I'll take it. Frog fishing 101. You can I'm see the bait. See it, huh? Fish got the bait. He waited just a little to make sure the fish had the bait. Set the hook. I forgot to clear my 
escape from yesterday. I wish it already said it had 19 pounds. Instead, we have two pounds. But I'm happy to have that two pounder. So I gotta, don't go that way. Made me think, uh, in the classic, 2002 classic there, um, this is how times have changed. Brandon's wanting that drone not to be right over him. Yeah. A helicopter, like not a very good cast. full Big blown helicopter, helicopter yeah. came down on me filming. Jerry, you were there, I'm sure. I don't know if you were in a helicopter, but he was that was like, He was driving it. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Uh, I'm trying to flip some vegetation in August, and it's, you know, really, they think it's tough there now. You, you try this in the middle of August, yeah. but uh, a helicopter. Uh, you know, it seemed like 20 feet over my head. I'm sure it was 100 or, or something like that. But uh, distracting just a little bit more than a, a drone. <laughs> Did you keep an eye on and make sure the helicopter was friend and not foe well, before it came? Well, we see them. I mean, you have to think about this. I mean, it's like helicopters do crash. We see drones crash all the time. It's, you know, not real comforting to have a helicopter 100 feet over your head. catastrophe when a drone Hey, but man, when it is hot. Oh, Jason Christie, here we go. There we go. So we're not snake bit. Christy's swimming a jig and also some top water walking bait. I think they don't expect them to just spawn out in the middle. I just looked over there and it was like this glowing dot rolling around. So, got lucky. Well, you have Fujita with a quick pounder to blow up on our frog and give us the cigar squelch, but it was a two pounder, so maybe we need to ask for a 10 and a five will show up. Or an eight, we'll ask for an eight. That's Very class at least feasible. That. I don't know how many tens are. Broke the ice, finally. Old Biffle head. Maybe that made the difference there, but to, they're on top of them bars like a... There we go. Finally. Get them, get them by. Uh, marine weather watch right there. I have 84 today, 66 just as last night. Cloudy with some showers, possible very uh, summer-like outlook, and even more so tomorrow, up to 87. Same low overnight, and same chance <laughs> of scattered showers. Last night's storms didn't seem to uh, affect the bite. The bite it's today, bad. Brian knew was worried the lightning may have cost me something. Nipped them in the bud. Yeah, I'll tell a good start again right, this morning. Now. Tony Bifflehead. Gary, got a fish on a swinging jig. I feel like if I just hang around this area, 
a good part of the day I can catch five. And I don't know if they'll be any big ones or not. I did was fortunate enough to catch two big largemouth yesterday here and I did not expect that at all. <coughs> Uh, probably. I don't know. Tommy Sanders, we have one angler officially over that cut line we said that would be the top 50. And Bob Downey just below it. We got, couple, oh, okay. got 49 right. more guys we need to get above that 22-12. It is interesting to see that. We always talk about do you double? You double the cut weight, add a pound or subtract a pound depending on how good or bad it fishes mm -hmm. the second day. Okeechobee doubled and went down two ounces. Seminole went up half a pound. The Classic went down dramatically and then the others went down half a pound and just one pound. So not too much variance there. Right. Well, we that will rule. wait that one out. Of course, that's what today is all about. All our field trying to make it, trying to break into that top 50 or stay in that top 50. Bernie Schultz, he's right, he's in. He's, he's gotten there. Bob Downey, great job, early limit. Brandon Polinick, saw him put one in the boat. Matt Heron. Kenta Kimura doing very well today. Walter's new and Brian new. We just saw him get on the board. More to come from Lay Lake. Caught him doing a lot of different things today, but really the key bait was this X Zone Deception Worm, Green Pumpkin Blue. You've probably heard those words come out of my mouth before. Uh, this is the same worm that when I won at Santee Cooper, I caught the 712 on out of the brush pile. Uh, I mean, it has bailed me out time and time again in tough grinder events. And today, the 514 I weighed came on this, uh, and it's just something I have a ton of confidence in. When I hook them, I feel like I've got a lot of confidence that I'm gonna land them as well. So. It will be in my hand again tomorrow uh, as we start day two, uh, as well as many other rods. Bass Pro Shop's top lure is with the man who started the day with the lead, Brandon Polinick. Hanging in there in third place right now. We have a lot of jumping up and down that leaderboard during the course of this day. But we have, uh, we're encouraged, I think we could say, from what we have seen so far. Multiple five pounders have. Uh, been caught by anglers early on on day number two of the competition here. Actually ahead of uh, yesterday's schedule with that respect. Yeah, absolutely. Yesterday, all day long, four or five pounders uh, caught, and this morning we've already got three unofficially on bass track. That one photo from uh, you were able to get from Kenta, that yeah. fish looked huge. Kenta, Cole Sands, Bernie Schultz, that's three five pounders. Such, how many did we have yesterday you said from Bass Track? Just total four for over five pounds. Wow. Good news is we got a long Joseph Webster has a four plus. Bad news is. I've been know. staring at that thing for 15 minutes. You just don't know where you're going to get your next. I just look over there and there's one sitting there. Or I don't. This fish. Today he's two pounder. See if he comes back. He swam off. Just keep fishing. Faster than I would like. I think that's just that's just a water level thing. It's just not comfortable. Brandon Paul and they talking about a water level thing. The fish not comfortable on the bed. That's one advantage anglers had yesterday. Also fishing for those. Fish that were up there on the bed with the with the rising or stable water, those fish have a whole different demeanor when they're up on the bed versus falling water. Be fine. Yeah, yesterday was. <laughs> really kind of a cluster. I, uh, I mean, I say that it was, I caught them doing a little bit of everything. I, I didn't have a very good practice. I could generate some bites, you know, casting this worm up the river like we're doing now. Really just trying to get up. Gosh, darn it. I missed one there. Um, really just trying to catch a limit. I started on the largemouth early and it didn't, uh, 
it didn't pan out this morning we didn't get a bite. And I may go back to flipping some later. Yesterday I caught one off the bed, one flipping, uh, one swimming a jig, and two casting this worm. So it was super random. Typical May. May is a it's kind of a junk fisherman's month. And I'm kind of a junk fisherman. <laughs> you just never know. Each day is different in May. This time of year the fish are moving, they're in all stages. You know, you're gosh, I cannot hook. They must be little bitties. I'm sure they probably are little bitties. But you never know. I've had three pound spots bite like that too. Miss them and then. Fire back in there and catch a good one. We talked about Matt Airy yesterday at the Screen Knowledge and his success in the month of May, and I'll I'll give him a week yeah, into June and yeah. the last week of April. That you know five definitely week a lot stretch. of junk fishing. I'll probably keep this worm in my hand for a little bit longer today till at least we get five. They 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 may, they may not weigh much, but it. We'll chase that big largemouth bite after we get five fish in the boat. Finished 13th at Pickwick last year in May. Then we go back to 2021. <laughs> he got fifth at Neely Henry. That was a bass. In late, late April at Lake Fork in 2021, he got 18th. Then we go back to 2020, Lake Eufaula, seventh, and he led part of that tournament as well. And I believe 2019. Couldn't be lucky enough for him to hit a worm, could have. You know, that Gunnersville event was in June, but he got a third place there. So post spawn immediate, mm -hmm. Matt Airy's your ticket. He had a great quote from the write up of the uh, weigh in yesterday. He, he outlined all the five, six different ways he caught him. He said, So I really got him dialed in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I kind of like tournaments like that, Davey, oh, yeah. because. If you have a one trick Sounds pony like a bass, or a, looks like a one bullet in your gun and, and they don't bite that for a few hours, you get a little concerned. Whereas if you, I mean, hey, I have kind of, I, I didn't catch many, but I caught one on a crankbait and one on top water, one on a worm. I'll just, whatever kind of suits the, suits the situation. Just let us drift back here. Yeah, I can certainly remember tournaments in May where you catch fish offshore on ledges, it. catch fish shallow on Suck top water. Wide variety from two feet of water to 20 feet of water. Yeah, so um, just kind of doing the same thing I did yesterday. Started out running the shad spawn, and yesterday it went better than it has today. I mean, I do, I have one. Um, just kind of mixing between a, a greenfish gaff swim jig whenever I get in that thicker water willow and just throwing a on a chatterbait, you know, out here in the, the cabbage, just some cabbage out here in front of the the water willow. I actually seemed to be in it, it a little bit better yesterday. Today's today, not yesterday. And so far it's not going great. But I do have one. I'm not gonna zero. I caught a big spot on that skip right there yesterday. And I went over to cross member. So yeah, just running the shad spawn in the morning and then uh, fishing docks later on. But as tough as it's been this morning, you know, I'm just kind of mixing some docks in as we go along. Uh, the sun definitely makes it better, but I think, I think the biggest thing is the current, you know, because every dock bite I've had has been on the poles. So they get behind that pole to get a little break from the current. Buddy back home, Scott Hamrick, taught me how to skip like that. 
He's a surgeon with that thing. Best fisherman he's ever met. <laughs> I like him though. He's full of crap, but I like him. So, we're gonna keep, keep on keeping on. And at some point today, we're gonna run into some more. And also at some point, I'm gonna learn how to skip a jig. Brian New had a good classic, made the cut at the classic 19th place. That's about it for him this year so far. He's, he's really needing to like completely, comprehensively overhaul his point situation here. Yeah, I've talked to him quite a bit about that. He he can't help but talk about it. You know, he's really in shock that he's done yeah. so poorly. But would you say Such 101st coming into this event? Yeah, he's 104, 103 and a half yesterday. yesterday. For some fresh but he's water. had a lot of he's he's told me every time I've talked to him after he's not had a good event that he's at peace with it. Stuff happens, things happen that out of his control, and he's just going to keep fishing. But he was. Definitely feeling a lot better yesterday afternoon after having a good day. Yeah. First day. Good. And it, it is true in fishing. There's going to be things that happen that are just out of your control. I don't know if running 187 miles on Lake Murray is out of your <laughs> control, but some things certainly have hey, happened you know, to him that If are. you can't catch the most weight, burn the most gas. I mean, you got to be the you got to be the winner of something. That's right. right. <laughs> At least I did this thing. You heard. But I think we all agree he's he's too good of a fisherman to be in the 101st place. Mm -hmm. Although we've had him on camera day one of two yeah. different events this year, yeah. expectation that he was going to yeah. catch him at Seminole, okay, it didn't work out, and you got to have him at Murray. That's his closest home lake, and then it it didn't work out there either. It's just kind of crazy. If you remember back the Seminole event, Drew Benton and Drew Cook were super excited about where they were going to start in an offshore place, and it didn't work out. Yeah. Well. Brand new and Buddy Gross, I was talking to mm -hmm. different ones, were kind of on the same deal, but they were doing that all day long. They didn't have a plan B like Benton and Cook did with the sight fishing as much. And it it went away. It went away yeah. overnight for all four of those guys. Um, and, and you just scratch your head and ask why, because the conditions didn't le lead you to think that it would be going away like that. So that's one instance that I know of, pre-tournament, all four of those guys were super excited about the start of the first morning, and it just went away. Mm. And some of these guys, they may be, you know, a part of the groupings of the best anglers in the world, but, man, some of them really have their styles. And talk to Buddy Gross at the Classic, and he's like, man, I just, we got to stop following the spawn sometimes because we don't have those summer offshore tournaments because we're, you know, this year we have Lay and Sabine River. We don't have, like, a, a TVA or a Lake Fork fishing offshore. And he's like, man, just with the influx of the weather and the fish are kind of spawning, kind of not, only the best sight fishermen are the ones that can actually find and see them. You know, when Drew Cook and Drew Benton are finding single digit fish on the bed in tournaments, you know it's not fully going on and that influx. Bernie Schultz still on top here. Good day, great start. Two big ones for Bernie, uh, uh, about three and, a, three and a quarter and a four and a half pound, no, no, five plus, I believe, fish, Bob Downey. Matt Heron, Brandon Polnick hanging in there. Logan Latuso, the rookie, jumping up into our top five, our top ten, I should say, at this point. But more to come. Just getting started here at Lay Lake. One of the most amazing things about this classic is the fishing freaks that showed up here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at that crowd. It is for the fans. Blast off, there's all the media, the fans, family, you're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Yossi gets it done! And oh, Canada, you have a Bassmaster Classic Champion! Yeah! Another! No way! 
Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Hope you're having a great Friday. We are for sure. This is day two of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. We got our full field 104 out there working as hard as they possibly can over this 12,000 acre impoundment. Try to find enough fish to make it to the weekend. To fish on the weekend, you got to be in the top 50 to do that. Let's get back out to the man who started the day with the lead after a great performance. 19 plus on day number one. Won eight times with the Bass Masters. Coming off a little bit of a momentum too. Top five at Santee Cooper last event. Brandon Paul now. I am simply amazed he had the back of beeswax. Creek all to himself yesterday. That's how it's supposed to work. Little guy. Oh, sorry, bud. Here we go. Ah. Look at that again. Is this, are they trying to tell me this is the power pole replay of the day again or something like they forced it on me yesterday morning? <laughs> that's, that's the quick draw replay right there. <laughs> that's well, how it's supposed to Hey, work. I don't mind watching me fish catches again. Heck no. So nice you can get to see it twice. Oh, sorry, bud. Here we go. We're going to see it three times. I bet he catches it again three times in a row. He having... put his three fish in the live well just like that. I mean, that's, that's how fast it can happen out here, guys. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that stuff happens. That was just a little technical glitch. Are we going to be... So if Brian catches one, we're going to let him catch three? That's real... <laughs> we... That's how big it is. Word is we're going to watch three times in a row if Brian catches one, so... I'm all for that. I mean, I like as many as possible. His buddies will be texting, I saw you catch six on six casts, yeah. bro. What do you mean you only got two? <laughs> like a chunk off. His bass track is down. Yeah, it's got him for none. On... No. Brian New fishing a green fish all trying purpose to catch jig. Trying bass is like trying to pull teeth. Wow. Half of his fish yesterday. I think three of the ones he weighed place. in was on boat docks with the jig. Hope sort of looked like in the photo galleries as well. Yesterday. I think a couple of photographers caught him running yesterday, around. Yesterday, zero amount of productive. Old chipper up there. I think they're putting a bass in the wood chipper. A buzz. It's a little, little steel for the chatter. Little steel. Throw the buzzer. Big and bite the buzzer. Buzz bait, a walking frog, a jig, and a swing head jig. Mm -hmm. Gary Klaus there in the four box. Some boat dock, shallow vegetation, and don't know a lot about Come this on, particular new. spot Gary's on. I thought he said something about shell bed down there. Shell bed? Something like that. I may have misheard. Ah. Wes Logan's trying to put his head in the move of the day. He was 99th, about five pounds out of the cut. He caught a four and a quarter. It's his third fish. He's up to 55th. He's trying to get in the cut on the Coos River, where That's he won a, a couple years ago up on Neely Henry. Move. Rarely can you be 49 spots below the cut line and only be five pounds out. That's, like that's, uh, yeah. that's, it's tight, tight this week. I think Shea Baker texted me and said, didn't Luke Palmer win by 14 pounds at Santee? And said, yeah, and he said, well, I think 14th, 
14th to 104th is only 14 pounds. See, it's all just mud. 90% of our field separated. All that was covered yesterday. But yesterday morning, no. it, it's almost comical the way I kept talking it's about not supposed to how be. those ounces and these anglers are saying, ah, oh, it's a 12 and a half inch spot. It doesn't mean, you know, that a 12 inch spot versus uh, weighing in four fish uh, is huge here. Yes. I think it was two and a half pounds from 50th to 80th, those 30 spots. Normally it's like a pound wow. for 10 spots, but it was even, even wow. more anglers per pound yesterday. That the Kimura still has our I'm most weight, 10 pounds on three fish. It would hurt my feelings if that sun decided to come out. I'm gonna go fish this little stretch over Waves here. Don't. It gets really, really shallow across this, and then it drops into a little hole. Stetson Blaylock and Pat Schlopper getting into our top 10. Schlopper's got a limit. Stetson's on four fish. There's not really a deep side here, it's all just flat. Stetson really having a pretty good season. He just hasn't been on Bassmaster Live that much. Yeah. It's just the way it works out sometimes. Come on. Kind of Luke Palmer in us. Luke yeah. Palmer, other than obviously the wind. Yeah. Classic, but he's always kind of right there in the 20s or 30s. Mm -hmm. Stetson having that kind of year. And it's interesting, you know, we're, we're going through this right now with Justin Atkins. We know how good of an angler Justin Atkins is, but he hasn't had the best elite series stretch to begin. Same thing for Stetson Blaylock, the first two years of his career. He was in the 55 to 65 range for Angler of the Year, missing out on the classic and stuff. But we're like, man, when is he going to get it together? The next season he wins an elite. He's vying for Angler of the Year that same year. And now he's just like one of the most rock solid guys. So you just have a blip in your career where it's almost like the first impression. Bassmaster fans are like, who is this guy? I thought he was supposed to be good. Now we're finally seeing the longevity of how good he's been since just a few year hiccup. He's made every cut this year. That's, that is admirable. Our leader is Bernie Schultz. And I'll show you why we're not taking our eyes off of him. Two of our best fish catches today, probably the two best fish catches we have had today. And certainly, oh, oh, there, I'm sorry, Davey, I'm stepping on your music. No, 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 not my music. Ronnie usually gets to pick these, but I guess he didn't on this one. But I think we can all agree oh, this no has doubt. been the highlight of the morning. Big the power pole replay Jeez, today. Bernie fine. Schultz catching a, ooh, I'm going to say three and a quarter, maybe a three and a half pound spotted bass. And then followed that up with a good old Alabama largemouth. Power pole replay of the day. I don't know if that fish landing was replay of the day, but the catching is what matters. Bernie Schultz, you are the power pole replay of the day of the second morning. Bassmaster lead on Lay Lake. And that grass can be an inch beneath the surface and this thing will run right through it. Uh, yeah, both of those came on a buzz bait. A Hildebrandt prototype buzz bait that's called the Squeak Easy. If they'll ever put it on the market, it's a buzz bait I designed for them a couple years ago and didn't get any traction. But it catches fish everywhere I throw it. It, you know, when they're on a buzz bait bite, it it really excels. And I was sewing the larger size in black. I put a toad on it, but it's got a great squeaking sound to it, and it shakes really good. And that's what all of my big fish came on. I'm going to turn back around. They biting for you, Skylar? I've only had two bites.
He call it Buzz Bait, the squeaking heat. S squeak easy. S squeak easy. S squeak easy. Squeak easy. Hey, he was completely honest there with Skylar Hamilton, but I can't help but giggle because the lack of context when you're on a, a body of water that's fishing tough and you say, I've only, I've only had two bites, man. <laughs> One's Andy, a I'm just three right plus there, and a I'm five. I'm going to go another 50 yards and turn around. That adds to a little bit of, yeah. I'm, I would be okay with only having two bites if there was those two. Matt Robertson's trying to reverse his fortune. He started 94th. This is something they have. He's got a limit almost nine and a half pounds, 27th bait. place right now. Wow. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm kind of anxious to get on that edge back there and try it. Both Bernie and Gary Klaus there on the right side of that four box. Four decades of Bassmaster experience for both of them. And they're both of them, their influence goes beyond just tournament competition. And Bernie, a celebrated artist and saltwater angler, and of course, Gary Klaus, the, the founder, leader, Phoenix Boats. So. I don't want to say Bernie's accidentally had a 40-year career in fishing, but when I went down to his house one year to do some content, and uh, he's got a huge collection of old antique baits and lures from just you know generations past. It's pretty cool to witness, but he was talking about how I just wanted to build a fish for a living, and so I did the inshore, the offshore, I did the bass, I did just whatever in Florida. He's right there in Gainesville, perfect place for that. And he said, I, I got into a bass tournament and started to do well and qualified for certain things, and I just ended up just, oh shoot, a decade's gone by and I'm yeah. a bass pro. And so I said, well, that's not too bad a way to back, in, back into a career. Can't yeah. see. Woke up and it's 2023 already. And there he is on top. There. He's one of the guys that personally writes his own column on Bassmaster.com mm -hmm. and really has, in a while, tells a lot of cool generational swim. stories and, and things like that. And they're almost pushing like redfish. And Gary and Bernie, but an organization, have oh, yeah. always, you know, back in the, when the magazine was, was all we all had to, to learn more about bass fishing. Good fish right there. Bassmaster Magazine. No, I'll swim over towards it. He didn't spook. Speaking of that. Swimming towards it. James Hall swimming gave us a, it. James Hall gave us a little heads up. If you use the word hashtag Bassmaster Magazine on social media and send in a photo or two, you could possibly be featured in the 500th magazine oh coming up God, later this year. Oh my God, that was a four pounder. That was a good one. Mm. Four pounder is the gold standard out here. That's We're gonna sure. do him a favor and not show that three times. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, like five pounder on. Maybe we, we might show it three times. Well, you know, nothing's off the table. <laughs> yeah. I counted three, up nine fish over four day. pounds yesterday. All yesterday. Probably. On Dave Chance Ford, Santee, there were ten over four pounds. Wow. Just with ten guys, not 104. And That's really, why that miss there by Brian yeah. New is hurt so much. And really, there's only eight guys on the final day of Santee with two not contributing to the fish tally. You know, they're mm -hmm. on a tough final One day. One day. I'm going to get it. Luke Palmer, the only angler in the entire field that called a limit all four days. That's right. Wow. Yeah. There's only like, what was there, only like four or five going into the final day? So. That was an unusual tournament, to say yeah. the least. It was really exciting to watch, but man, it could be so brutal. Our guys out there. Getting a little bit slow for them right now, but that's the way the, the days play out here and just about everywhere we go. You have up and down periods during the day, but Bernie Schultz, great work done in the first hour of his fishing day, and he's got the two pound lead on top. Bob Downey, Brandon Polnick right behind. And Matt Heron, Stetson Blaylock, Heron moving up the leaderboard a bit as well. Gussie, Jeff Gustafson, our world champion, is in there. We've got plenty of names, plenty of movement yet to come. Yeah! Burger! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Hope it's a good Friday for you. It's a good Friday for us. When we get through with the fishing today, we will be exactly halfway through. 
our 2023 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. 104, full field, fishing for the second day in a row here, trying to make, make the weekend. Stay here in Alabama and fish for two more days. Get you out to Matt Airy. Still looking to get on the board here. Matt Airy, doing, picked up, but like he's casting a worm, caught a few of his fish yesterday doing that. Not big, but by gosh, it's number one. Got us a one pounder. We'll worry about marking them later. Pretty sure that fish was on a bed. I threw in there and missed that fish yesterday, and he's right there in that little current break behind that piling. And I missed him again today, and I threw back in there and caught him. And he looked a little, his tail was a little pink. Not a big fish, but what are you, what are you, what are you vaping out there? <laughs> Either that. We'll move on from that. Right. Tell you about Matt Robertson, who's 94th. He just filled his limit with a 312. He's up to 12 and a quarter and 14th place. Oh, wow. From 94th to 14. About that. Man. Christy? Knew we had to see his better bait while chasing Christian long enough this time of the year. Uh -huh. I don't think he is. Oh, that's a keeper all day long. Got to be 12 inches. Mm -mm. Well, there he is. I mean, like this barely. Dave, if you hadn't been in studio all year, you've been on site, but you know, what Matt Airy said, we say that often in here in Such. What you vaping over there, Such? Because we just, you know, sometimes you it gets ever a little... said. <laughs> just that's a common phrase for you. Brandon Paul Nick with a Oh, I don't mm -hmm. think that one's gonna be twelve inches. That's a juvenile. For yeah, sure. that's a juvenile, that's right. <laughs> yeah. One of the bass fry. Ah, uh, he thinks he's going to put him on the he's, measuring board. He's he's smart. I don't think that one's going to cut it. He's probably not even going to Ooh, pretty. Yeah, sure. Uh, you got to close the yeah. mouth, so you, you got to close it. <laughs> so sad. Wasting time. He's not there. Here we go. 11 and 7 eighths. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Measure twice, cut once. That's, one of those that was has the condition where their tail's too close to their mouth. Uh, yes. That was yes. high problems with it. <laughs> Sometimes you can flip the board over and it, it'll still be that way. <laughs> <laughs> that was an all time classic. That was, that was, was you, know, you talk one. about a classic move. That was that was it. <laughs> I wish we could pull that up. <laughs> Not flip the fish over if you weren't watching. Uh, if you were, I'm sure you're laughing just like we are here in the studio. But uh, Man, <laughs> turn the board when around. Was, when was yeah. that? Golly. Still too short. Well, you know, tried everything I could think of. <laughs> just for good measure. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Oh, uh, Gary Klaus caught most of his weight yesterday in about an hour on this spot. Mm -hmm. and, you know, this is a dilemma. Bernie Schultz, same way. But Bernie's got two in the box, both nice ones. Gary just won, but 
do you do you sit it out and hope that they replenish or do you move on? Take another big spot. Here we go, Gary's hooked yeah. up. You talk him into it. Picked, Picked up a drop, drop shot. shot. Feels like it might be a decent one. Gotta be careful, it's got that little bitty hook in there. Come on. You're not fighting like an old Alabama spotted bass. Pull him out. Watch it be a catfish. No, it's a decent little spot. That's all I had to do is pick a dang spinning rod up at the drop shot. I guess well, that's a big old spot. Ain't a big old spot, but it's bigger than some of them I've got. I'm proud of him, I can tell you that. Had him hooked good. Man. Pounder. We'll take him. I'm proud of him. Give me him knuckles, cameraman. Here we go. Ha. Let's do it. All right. Well, that seemed pretty easy. Just throw a drop shot out there and wind him in. I guess I'll try that again. They don't like that big stuff till the current gets going, I guess. Nucks for cameraman Seth, and you're two pounds closer to making the cut, which is all, you know, you never want to think about that when you're in the top six after day one of, I got to make the cut. But on a place like this, you can see guys go from 99th to 14th. Yeah. You can see guys also go from 6th to 55th or something to miss out. I heard Bernard Schultz say when he called that five pounder, we're in. That's yeah. exactly what he yeah, was talking about. It's on his mind. Yeah, he's. He's seen it happen, yeah. being up there and not being up there real fast. That's the last thing you want to do is count your chickens before they're official. And when you look at that Angler of the Year standings after day one of an event and you're like, I'm in sixth and I'm all the way up to 13th in points, well, just test your fate. And if you drop below the 50 mark and you lose about 50 yeah. points on a given day, you're going to be like, ah, I'm 34th. I shouldn't have looked because it was all unofficial. So some of these guys, if you can get in that top 50 and and know that you can't drop, you know, 50 additional spots after that, then you, you, yeah, you saved a lot of points this week. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Got another big mover, Alex Redwine, Blue Ash, Ohio. Yeah. He's 51st, first, first man out of the cut. He's about 11 pounds today. He's up to fourth place. One of, what, three limits in our top 10 right now. We were talking to um, Sam George, one of the Opens pros. That's going to be on the next Bassmaster podcast previewing Wheeler, which is his home lake. Talk to him about the importance of that with a 225 boat field, gaining points when you can gain them because the opportunity to bomb in the opens, if we consider an 80th or worse in the elites a bomb, 150th or worse, at, you know, that's the bottom 75 is a bomb. He explained how he was in the 160th place at Bugs Island on day one. Didn't do tremendously great. Moved up to 80th though. And I said the difference in those 80 oh, spots oof. you gained was the difference in being in the top 25 in points right where he's at to being 58th in points. And if you want to be in the top nine to make the elites next year, that you'll look back at day two at Bugs in an event that you didn't get a check at and won't be your best finish. And you'll be like, that's the reason why I, I saved a bunch of points on day two. So some of the elites are doing that today. And Robertson's at it again, a three pounder. He's up to 13 and a quarter on the day, 11th place. Ounces out of our top ten. You're right. He's he's doing the the reverse of uh, last week. Yeah, yeah, he leads the event and then falls off. Really, no, last two you know, started Murray slow. Yeah, he led both of them. Well, yeah, fast yeah. starts. So if he's if he's got it right, he should be in first place when we start the final day. Right. That's right. Boy, and Alex Redwine again up to third, second place. 
He just called with a two and a half pounder. Spawns like this, and then you have a gap. They'll spawn in that gap a lot of times. It's almost like its own little secondary cove. I'm saying it's going to work here, but I've just seen that happen. And especially if you have a mat that's that's deeper, right? it's, they can't spawn along the edge of it. They'll get they'll get up in these little gaps and spawn. There we go. Not a big one, but a keeper. Gonna swim over and eat it. Gosh, he looks skinny. Got him. Calling the shots. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't want to land you on that side with that grass right there. I have to land him on the front. Come here. Come here. Come here. We got him. Told you he was skinny. Post spawn. Post spawn skinny. But I'm happy to have him. Thanks, Sago. Not a Sago five pounder, but I guess it, when you're at Lay Lake, that's like a Sago five pounder. It should be two pounds for him to regain the lead. I think that'll do it. I'm bare base one this morning. Justin Hamner with a four and a half pounder. Just got in our top ten, the tenth. It's hard to tell when they're that long and lean. Oh yeah. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Back in the lead, Such. Yep. Alrighty. He's one who had right. honestly pretty poor season the first three Elite Series events before having a top five at, at Santee Cooper, so he needs another good one. Even though we're, you know, assured he's going to do well in the Northern Swing, he always seems to do well, but you don't want to have to just put all the pressure. i got to get three top 20s. You want to do some work in the South as well. Now second place Bernie Ooh. Schultz, but maybe not for long. Ooh. Great camera work. Another good one. He's only got two keepers so far, so this one puts him right back on top. Trailer hook car, see that? Pound 14. 13. Come on. Bro. That helped. Small line in there a little bit. Great look right off the point of this willow, willow grass. We have all up and down both sides of Lay Lake. Buzz bait with a toad on the back, barely nipping the trailer hook. That's all you need. Third fish for Bernie. I mean, it's like yesterday. They're just, they're just, this stretch has really quality bass on it for whatever reason. I don't get a lot of bites, but the chances are good when I get one that's going to be better than three pounds. Um, and the ones that are under three are, you know, they're chunky pound and three quarter to two and a half pounders. So, I mean, there's, they're the right fish. This place has the right fish if I can just get enough bites. And I got to pound it to a pulp. I mean, I got to go back and forth, back and forth. And every once in a while, one will make a mistake and either bite the buzz bait or a pop, I'm throw a whirl pop or a swim jig.
Good aerial view there. What Bernie's fishing? Some submergent vegetation. Well, he said it looks this, a lot like pepper grass. As long as we got cloud cover, I'm gonna stay here. Five anyway. If I get five, I'll probably leave it. But if, um, as long as the cloud cover's here, I'm gonna hang in here and try to get five. And then um, I got some fish up the river. The water's up a bit. One place in particular. And that's kind of a pitch and flip and bite. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'm not done because of this, you know, going away. I've got other stuff I want to do. This has been kind of a bonus, to be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect here yesterday. I was hoping for one or two keeper bites, maybe three, and I ended up catching a really good limit. So, this place has got the potential. You just need the fish to cooperate. Schultz with 10 pounds and four ounces unofficially. The only bigger limits out there were Alex Redwine in third place right now with 11.10 and Matt Robertson climbing way up the leaderboard today with 13 pounds and four ounces unofficially. Need everybody watching to send a letter or make a phone call to Yakima Bait Company and tell them to build this buzz bait. <laughs> it's called the Squeak Easy. Called a squeak easy. Do a little grassroots campaign in there. Catch a couple that more five pounders and yeah, that's uh, definitely get them to build. Absolutely, for sure. Bernie Schultz back on top. Brandon Polnick uh, sat there for about oh, a good 45 seconds before Bernie struck back with his uh, third keeper of the day, Alex Redwine. Of course, we mentioned him. Big move up the leaderboard. Bob Downey hanging in there. Aaron Blaylock, Gustafson, Latuso, Fighter, and Hamner rounding out our top ten. The Waterbreaker Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Moving right on through our morning hours here, day two of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake on the Coosa River here in Shelby County, Alabama. Discover Shelby. That's our host organization here. And certainly appreciate all the great work and promotion and everything our terrific hosts do here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Brian New started this day in second place. Uh, right behind Brandon Polinick. It's been a little slow for him today. Still just one fish in the live well. all-purpose jig all up inside that mouth yeah god almighty boy let's freaking go son we just made 10 G's dog probably shouldn't scream that loud but damn gum that was cool oh done lost two big ones then called a giant. Oh. I shouldn't have screamed that loud. Everybody in the Half turbot does where I just jig. caught that big one. Big salty chunk. Uh, he just threw his rod in the lake. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> Good swap. Yeah. $10,000 bass yeah, for do that all day. <laughs> He's only got 96 on the front yeah, deck, so. <laughs> he has busted the 20 mark on his deck there, I promise you. Just like his mentor taught him. A lot, I don't know. <laughs> He's probably, wow. probably a six pounder.
Brian New got a little excited there, and it made us excited here in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge to kind of talk about exactly something we just saw from Brian New. He said, I probably shouldn't have yelled so loud. There's people around. That is because the main lake, and especially that portion that's not way up the river at the Logan Martin Dam or way down at the bottom of the lake, Paint Creek, the Lay Lake Dam, such, uh, places like that, all those anglers mid lake are dealing with a lot more stable and consistent water when they're not relying on that current flow. And I looking at the Dakota Lithium Screen Knowledge with some Humminbird Lake Master, uh, looking at some of these pockets, you think may fish are on the bed, fish are just getting off the bed. You may want to go into a pocket off the main lake. It's much more stable, but with the lack of water movement, but also the water possibly dropping a few inches every day, coming up a few inches, dropping again, the instability in water in the backs of these creeks, which is where all the red outline, the shallow water highlight is on our mapping. As you get closer to that main river, you can see how it stables out a little bit before it dumps off into the main deal. This is a different look of a couple creeks that jut out into the main river. Now, if you're on a stretch, just the main drag, you can see how one side of the river can act totally different than the other. This is a couple hundred yards from the shoreline as it gets out from one foot to three foot, gets all the way out to five, six, seven foot, and then it gets from 10 to 20 real quick before dumping into the river channel. Whereas the opposite side of the river, it is maybe 100 yards that goes from one foot to 20 feet. It's a lot steeper of a drop. It's a lot closer contours that grass, that water willow that these guys like Bernie Schultz and stuff are fishing on the bank with top water, that might have a lot more water on it and it may extend a little bit farther out. A lot more of that is viable. When you have grass here and it's all one feet, one foot deep, when that water starts to drop, those fish don't have really anywhere else to go other than maybe a mid-depth spot or out to an offshore place, maybe a hard spot, um, some stumps, brush piles, things like that. So we'll keep an eye on the main river drag, which often in river fishing is the most unstable, but this week it seems to be the most stable with the water level fluctuating and the lack of current. It's kind of staying uh, pretty, pretty constant in that mid-lake portion right around Beeswax, Bully Creek, stuff like that. Good stuff. Illustration there. Yep. Good stuff. Go to lithium screen of knowledge. One more. My new can now breathe, I think, now. It's big. So that gum big. And it's awesome. Oh. Now I just need three bites. I done made 10 grand. Um gotta, gotta catch the rest of the bites, though. I've lost two really good ones, like a three pluses. Um, but hey, that's fishing. But we got a great big one. It is awesome, and I love it. Oh, don't you do that. Don't you do that. Amazing how the mood can change. Elation changes to <laughs> dejection Maybe. almost. Maybe so. On a dime. So, Ronnie, are you going to pick the power pole replay of the day uh, based on that last catch? Mm. Uh, Man, I feel like at the end of the day, with as many fives as we've seen, they've all got to be in together in one of them. But I think with that latest catch, we have to give the power pole replay of the day so far, the mid-morning power pole replay of the day, to Brian New. Lost a few bites, but like you said, has that half-ounce all-purpose yeah. jig in his hand. And on docks, for a Carolina boy, that is exactly the recipe for success. Lay now. Lake, that translates to a six-pounder, yeah. which... God almighty. Honest, that's a 10 pounder at Santee Cooper, and that is yeah. a game changer for someone like Brian New that is pleasantly excited to get a $10,000 check for the first time in 2023 if it can obviously other make it back to Other than the classic. Other than the classic. Yeah, other than the classic. He was pretty excited about getting moving up into the, the cut at the classic, also. Not quite that excited, but almost. <laughs> that's because he knew Brian Schmidt, his buddy, was going to give him all his juice on the <laughs> final day. <laughs> Well, that's the biggest one we have seen on Bassmaster Live here. Lay Lake, for sure. And News Bass Track isn't working. He should be I in our that. top three. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, uh, we got to get him to reset. Can't find him on Bass Track. That's. We'll have to see if we can I get think that he threw it out. in the water when he kicked his rod in. <laughs> hey, when you've had a slow start like he's had this year, he was. <laughs> you could tell he mm. was overly excited about that. Matt Airy. Probably not even a keeper. But we're gonna measure him. 
because right now we'll take anything we can get. It's a line burner there. Mm. <laughs> it's all over it. I mean, he touches. <laughs> Maybe flip the ruler. I better put a buoy on this one. He's so small, I might not be able to catch him to turn him loose if I have to call him. That's kind of sad. You know, we have a... My, my, <laughs> my roommates and I have a... a we have a trophy that we pass around to whoever wins the house this year. You know, it's me and Canterbury and Hollywood. And uh, it's a six inch largemouth mounted on a plaque that Scott bought when he was in Mexico. So whoever wins the house gets to keep that trophy till the next tournament. And you get to ride around with it on your dash. So I ain't sure if, if Michael was pulling in to fish some docks, what he was doing, but I really wanted to fish him, but I wasn't going to cut him off, so, I mean, he was there before I was. So I'm going to go fish these docks. I'll fish them docks later. If I can get to them. They look to be fairly shallow. But there's a little bit of a ditch. You can see there's a bar that runs out here. It's two foot deep, but there's a ditch and then there's a bank. so. It's kind of, kind of really ideal. Micah, is he talking about Ike and Ellie? No, I think he said Micah. Oh, Micah, okay, I was about to say. Aries fish went in as a 12 ouncer. See, I'm not believing Greg Hackney when he put a six ouncer on his bass track. Nah, I don't <laughs> know if I'm buying that either. And just know, not every elite pro puts in their fish. The marshals put them in and sometimes the marshals ask, sometimes the anglers offer it up, sometimes no communication and it's just a guesstimation. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to put it on Hackney because we like to poke the bear a little bit, but. Maybe it's a God six pounder man. incorrectly entered. I wish I could watch that clip. Just open could up. be. It's amazing. One one bite, one fish changes mm. everything at a tournament like this. And a six pounder is a good fish anywhere, but in an event like this, when you oftentimes struggle to just catch a lemon. And I noticed he, he had made his pitch under the dock and, and fished the jig on the bottom a little bit and he hopped it like about to reel it in when that fish bit. So it could have been like one second there between that fish actually biting yeah. that jig or not. Yeah. Get up here. Try to get up here somewhat quickly and it's kind of fat. see if we can whoa, see these big whoa, ones that we're pushing up here. What about? They're pushing around. They just got away. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. The two biggest ones I've seen all so day. Five. It's going five fourteen. Up. Chasing. I go, I go five eleven. It's more than four ounces. Six. What'd you say, Such? Let me just squeak over six. Five ten. Oh, you, uh, your price is right at me. That okay. might be a little heavy. Five ten. Oh, oh come oh, on, oh, your price oh, is oh, right oh, at oh, me. That's still a great big one. Oh. Skinny. It's skinny. Five ten, so seven ten. Seven ten. Total, total. <laughs> that fish was skinny. 
I didn't realize it was that skinny. I had a head of a freaking 49 pounder. <laughs> Darn. Wow. Over double the world record. Did, yeah. did, did he pull in and fish those docks or what? Did Mar or Micah pull in and fish them docks? What was he doing? I didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't see it. Like I was going to go in there, but oh, that puts him within two yeah. ounces of Not Bernie like Schultz. Not like on the other side. I don't even see him right now. Like I didn't want to cut him off. Even though I know he went over there because he's seen it. Saw me yelling and screaming and throwing my rod at me. Like, yeah. You're going to say yeah, it, say uh, it. I don't like this, though. And I don't like the looks of that dock, so we're going to move. Seth Fighter just got his limit, Tommy Sanders, and he's up to 10 pounds on the day, wow. third place right now. Obviously, Brian Newsfish will pop in and knock him to fourth, but Seth Fighter making a move into the top five. Things are happening out there, obviously. You know, forget what I said yesterday about when you're trying to land two, you can only use one hand because you're holding your rod with the other hand. <laughs> Brian New just showed us you do not have to hold your rod with no, the other hand. No, you just turn it loose. <laughs> Set it free. <laughs> That's what it takes. And like you said, he, he'd do that all day long, and most other people would too. In exchange for a 510, Bernie 5 Schultz. 5'10, you nailed it. Yes, sir. Bernie Schultz uh -huh. right on top. Brandon Polinick. Seth Fighter, as Ronnie just pointed out, big move up the leaderboard. Matt Heron holding his own on day number two. No doubt about that. Alex Redwine, one of our day's big movers as well. Downey, Blaylock, Latuso, Hamner, and Gustafson are top 10 looks different. Much different than the start of our day. Yes! Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Well into the third hour of fishing on day two of the Swataburger Bassmaster Elite. Lay Lake on the fabulous Coosa River coming down out of North Georgia all the way to the, well, to the city of Montgomery where it hooks up with the Tallapoosa, becomes the Alabama River, also a scene of lots of uh, BASS clashes through the years. Bernie Schultz, still the man on top, took over that lead very early today with a five plus pounder and uh, three and a three and a half pounder or somewhere in that region to add to it. Brian knew though, we just saw some giant fireworks from Brian catching a 510 right in front of our eyes off a boat dock. Brandon Polinick hanging in there as well. Seth Fighter, Matt Heron, lots of movement up and down the leaderboard. As we said, when we left just a few minutes ago, it looks way different than it looked to start the day, but our Mercury move of the day, Davey Hyde, man, yeah. Matt Robertson. Mercury move of the day has got to be Matt Robertson. You know, he started off well in our last two events at Lake Murray and at Santee Cooper and kind of fell off as the tournament progressed, but just the opposite, had a slow start yesterday. From 94th place, he started this morning. All the way up in the top 20, about 17th place, I think unofficially we have him at Bass Tracks. Got it done early this morning, starting off at 649, which is just 19 minutes after takeoff after a little run. So about the time he made the first cast or two, he started putting them in the boat. Had a good solid five fish limit at 8.32 a.m. Finished up with a three pounder. Matt Robertson, definitely Mercury move of the day. He was in the second flight. It was like takeoff 28 versus yeah. wow. launch. He didn't go far, did he? Back to Brandon Polinick, Beeswax Creek. That's where the launch and the weigh-ins take place. Fishing in some skinny water back there yesterday and today. Oh my gosh, I got one. No, no. <laughs> no. Oh, I had one of the big ones. I had one of the big ones. What happened? Oh, gosh. I was getting ready to reel up and it went boom. Like, as I started to reel, it bit it. Oh, my gosh. That was one of the big ones. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Just blind casted it. Brandon Polinick back in the 
shallow, shallow areas of beeswax creek. Uh, just throwing these fish he's seeing wake around in about a foot or less of water and had a good one on there. You gotta, uh, what you want to do, so important this tournament to put everybody in the boat. We got to replay that one more time to even out on the additional catches we saw earlier. We got to <laughs> show the misses just as many times yeah, so that we yeah. can keep it level. Keep his bass track honest, you know. Yeah. Very, very he is one guy when you look at the, the, the water levels and this the changes and the mapping and stuff that you're concerned of angle I up in a narrow creek, skinny, you know, backwater, it. losing some of his fish population. I think population. it's always best to slide down this side. It seems to be the the best view. I can see that bed from way out there now. Even though the sun's not out, just the fact that it's gotten a little lighter. I can almost see it so good I can tell you confidently there's nothing on it. <laughs> Unfortunately. I don't know if Brandon burnt over about six or eight gallons of fuel at the Santee tournament. He stayed real close to takeoff and doing the same thing here. Mm -hmm. Worked out well for him. They like, they like this little section here. <laughs> they don't like it yet. Not this morning. Got a wide range of regions represented in our top 10 right now unofficially with Bernie from being being from Florida, got Brian New from the Carolinas, Polinick, Downey, Fighter all from the, I guess, Midwest to, to hard part is west, the west, west yeah. Midwest. They don't move a lot of time. Can't Two see Alabama them. anglers, you they got an Arkansas, still. Louisiana, you got an Ohio <laughs> angler. Easier to catch. You got a wide range here at Lake Lake this week. That's why everyone stacked their Rapala fantasy fishing with Alabama anglers, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Which, Such, Such, did you look at how many officially came in below the cut line yesterday? And we were talking about Tally it up. No, it was half and half in the yeah, Carolina swing. 14 but, guys, yeah. Yeah, so then I want to see what it is for today. We'll see who has some work to be done. You're talking about diversity, but for the last two years, we just about can't have a top 10 without a guy or two from Wisconsin or Minnesota. Yeah, yeah exactly. That is a very, very How many years thing. on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail did you never see? Yeah, wouldn't at or, all. Not very often. I shouldn't say never, but yeah. not very often. But you're right now. There's oh, yeah. strong. going to be a few in the top 10 every event. I like to entertain these people, but fish aren't biting right now. Bernie's leading the event now, but you can see the Florida roots in him uh, back and forth, up and down one yeah. stretch. Uh, and you certainly can't knock it. He's leading right now, but you wonder, will these fish replenish throughout the day mm -hmm. or no? Overnight, maybe so, a, a few here and there because of shad spawn. But. And you wonder if, if what he saw yesterday, not only his weight, but he said he could walk on the shad. There were so many shad. And then there was some there, but not, not nearly as active this morning that maybe he, he expects this to only be a two-day spot, you know, or like, hey, maybe more fish showed up because there were shad, and he's just trying to 
wait them out maybe, who knows. But on Lay Lake, it's like Scott Canterbury said when we had him on the podcast, he said, I'm trying to fish four one-day events at Lay Lake. I'm trying to do my best on that specific day with the conditions, knowing that I can't bank on that to go to the next day. I may go run at the dam one day. I may go down to Payne Creek one day, you know, all these different plans. And so some of these guys may, may have kind of been revealed, I can only do this for one or two days because it's already changing on me. Yeah, I think that's the time of year um, you, sure. you have to fish this way because the, the fish are changing from, and you see right there, Brandon Pollock's obviously throwing to a bed. There are a lot more empty beds right now. More empty beds today than yesterday, not just from one week oh, until yeah. the next, but from day to day. So you have to have to fish it one day at a time with the conditions. Bernie just once today mentioned the fact that he's got some fish in one other place. But, uh, I think he said up upriver, right? Up river, yeah. Up river, yeah. Up river. Has not gone to that yet. That also may be in his game plan of not leaving this specific stretch is that if he does evacuate and go to upriver before they run the water, he might he might feel like he's wasting an hour just like fishing that. in dead no, current, you know, point. or something. Or not it does feel not like a title place one hundred percent when we have current as a factor, like that your timing on stuff matters. He's expanded farther down the bank, I think time. on this pass, and we've seen him all morning, but you also when he I'd be caught a second fish, fish, he's yeah. like, I know I'm in. And you know you've made the cut. Do you do you think that if you stay on this stretch, there's right, any sure. possibility you could win? Coming I don't back, think so. No. Yeah. It's also a time where you've got so you much more time left in this day to maybe not go to your next group of fish, but go try to find something totally her. different. Like maybe Matt Robertson did today. Mm. The weather, the, the sky, the light looks carbon copy of yesterday. Yes. About a little later than right now, the wind started to pick up a little bit. I don't know if that's going to happen today or not. Just depending on those little sails, whether mm -hmm. they pop up yes. or not. But yep. really I really think it helped the fishing yesterday afternoon. I think it did. That wind. Yeah, Matt Robertson, there's our biggest bag at 13 and a quarter. So you test and see and if they're the still around or 10 not. pounds, some are all 10 and a half on four it, fish. A lot of times they'll show themselves. Oh, no, I got the grass. She's not going to follow it with a bunch of grass on it. But Alex Redwine from 51st them. to 7th, a little more than 12 pounds, and he's got 10 fish he's caught and weighed. And Bob Downey's up to 11 fish. He's only got 10 and change. And Alex, Alex needs a good finish this week for sure. I know he's licking his chops for the northern swing. Being a smallmouth guy from up north, but being a second year pro and now having the ability to get cut on the Elite Series, it starts to weigh on you a little bit, especially if you didn't do your job last year, like points wise. Knowing that if you have to negate to your average, it might not be as good as others. Gary Klaus got a little bite there. He's still on two fish, I believe. Yep. You say that getting in position for the northern swing, a lot of these northern guys who expect to make some ground up in the AOI. Yeah, Mike Iaconelli's making up a little ground on Brandon Cobb today for the AOI lead. He's in fourth place right now hmm. in the AOI. Ike is with 27th, and Cobb has kind of fallen down a little bit today. Of course, you know, Cobb with that yesterday's finish increased his lead to about 55 points in the OI. So, not big move for him yesterday. Huge. Not committing. Oh, 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 oh. let's see a little black tail. Where'd that black tail go? Well, I just caught one more glimpse of it. swim right past it, aren't you? Yes, you're still swimming. Well, you mentioned Upper Midwest and Jay Shakira with a three pounder. He's over 10 on the days at the fourth place. Mm. I feel like we're going to see an angle of the year from him like in the future. He just seems just doesn't have many holes. The only holes in his armor last year and that we've seen was 
summertime, deep offshore fishing at Lake Fork and Pickwick. Those are the only two blemishes on his record. Will Davis just caught his second fish a one pounder. Dana hockey player might be. <laughs> of hey, that means he doesn't have to be the muscle. And she made that clear at the Night of Champions during the during the the interview that she wears the pants in the family because she can put him up against the, the rink and take yeah, him out. That's <laughs> that's her story. She's sticking to it. You got that, you got that straightened out. Moving on, getting closer to the fourth hour of fishing. For our 104 anglers out there today, and Bernie Schultz, the veteran from Florida, man on top. Ryan New, Brandon Pollock started the day with the lead. Ryan New started in second place, fell out of it, and he's back up into second place on the strength of a 5'10. Caught off a boat dock just a little bit ago, and that's the aforementioned Shakura, Downey, and Fighter, our upper Midwest guys, yeah. and all the rest. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. We got a pretty good start. I mean, that obviously is very special and uh, kind of worked out. You know, I did a lot of different things. You know, it started off good. I kind of got a few clues. Kind of got those those fine details that I've been missing all year, like really fine deals. You know, tomorrow's a new day. I don't really know how it's going to go. But I'm looking forward to it. Had to be a reason he was looking forward to today, and I think we just saw it here at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake, a 5'10", unofficially for Brian New. Put him right back into second place where he started the day. A little slower start from him, but set up a lot of ground with that 5'10". Let's get back out on the water live now with Gary Klaus. So he's going to... Feels he can catch a limit here. It might take him all day, but he thinks he can do it and just hope for some big ones to be among the that limit. There we go. Solid large, large mouth. mouth. That's what we've been waiting on. Was the large mouth. Yes, sir. Spot lock down, right on the good spot. So probably two and a half, I guess. I'm gonna put him over here. All right. Well, let's get her going. All right. You know, he's not too he far. pretty good, too. That's a good sign. There's no question on that one. From the screen of knowledge, when I was showing the mapping, he's not too far from that really wide, shallow area on the main lake. He pushed his hook down. Definitely a keeper. Oh yeah. By a mile. It is difficult when you go from one lake's 14, one lake's 12, one lake's 15. It's and you only see three fish in practice. Yeah. <laughs> what I was saying about Klaus was he's fishing offshore. He's fishing right on the middle of the river channel, it seems. But he's on one of those areas where the shallow water goes really far out. So he's probably not fishing too tremendously deep. Probably in the five to Five to eight, Hooked five to again. ten range. Ah, little one. Little guy. What do you think he'll keep? It's another large mouth, huh? It's a burner. Ouch. I believe he'll make it. He might keep.
Yeah, he'll keep, but barely. He's one that's got to go, for sure. White. White's the little guy. White for... What did he say? The little guy. Little guy. Yeah. Green got to go. They all have their little saying for <laughs> the color they use on the smallest Green fish. White for the little guy. <laughs> it could be. A 12-inch 12, a 12 inch flurry. Hey, those, that's 12 more ounces than he had. And yes. That's four Dang keepers. Right. He's back to where he to started, sixth yeah. place. Yeah, he got him back into the top 10 and, and more. Last two fish, three and four. Just saw Christy catch his third a minute ago. Yeah, it's really incredible, that white for little guy, but that fish could end up being yellow for gold. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> You just true. never know on this, yeah. this lake this week. Almost makes the guy want to stay. Well. Hey. Look how much water Jason corner. Christie is covering with that frog. He'll slow it down about two, maybe three sure times the cast, like and then it's back there. Yeah. Back to the boat, make another cast. Drew Benton's making a move. He started in the 90s. Oh, no He's up to 37th, and he had fallen to 32nd in AOY, and right now it shows him a 10th, jumping Ooh. up 60 points. He had five for six, 12 yesterday, 93rd place. Mm. Got a four and a three and a half pounder, four fish for 10 and a change. He'll have to catch a little more to stay there, but just think, right. one 10 pound day, move you 20 positions in Angler of the Year, five tournaments in. <laughs> yeah, that's, 90, that's, third that's place that's amazing. Take, you knock that's, you back. Yeah, that's some tight. Tight scores you there. Think about it. I think I think I was accurate on this that Hank Cherry was like 68th or 70th in Angler of the Year after day one at Santee when he only had nine pounds. He goes catches 22, catches 19 and change, finishes starts the event 83rd, finishes in 13th. Now he's inside the cut unofficially on day two of this event. Just a few days of fishing, and he's inside the classic cut when he was in like 70th in points. Like you were, my season's hinging on tomorrow. I go catch him, and now. Hey, I'm in the classic. Nothing happened. Don't look. <laughs> I'm back. That's not Christie's frog. I can tell by the movement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to probably get out of this area and start doing some running around. I, it's kind of went about how I expected it to this morning, but I was hopeful that you know some of the fish that I saw cruising around yesterday might lock down in a few places or they may still be cruising around and I could catch them. But they dropped the water really bad uh, last night and I think it just sucked all those fish out and it's just now it looks like it's actually starting to come back in. Which I don't, I don't know why they keep doing that. Uh, so maybe this afternoon it'll be better. But we just have three small ones in the box right now. Probably enough for us to get paid, but not enough for us to stay toward the top of the leaderboard. Had one missed opportunity on a big one, but it is early, very early. And uh, yeah, we'll figure figure something out before the day's over. <laughs> Difference between my day today and yesterday is I've got about five and a half pounds at 9:30, and I had about 18 yesterday. And 
That current's pulling so hard that it's putting a bow in my line across this little gap. So, uh, all the, the drone. all the theories run through my head about you know what what should be happening. Water level looks so 396 is the full pool mark that they classify for Lay Lake 396. This is the lowest it's been since April 30th, but it's all just incrementally within inches. It's oh. been full pool. Now it's this. It is right now today currently half a foot low, but yesterday it was coming up and was only yeah a, this is two just inches low. A shell now bed spot on the main river. A couple inches down. And, um, it comes up to it. The shallow is two foot right over there, and I'm sitting right on the edge of it. And there's a rough section here, the kind of a key spot. That's where I caught the bulk of my weight yesterday, and I've yet to uh, I've yet to get them going today like I did yesterday. I did catch two largemouth there, one that was real little, but I caught a pretty good largemouth right, right here a minute ago. But it's just a shell bed spot, and I'm just dragging the lead head with a Strike King Rage bug on it. It's just a bait I throw. Everywhere I go, really, it's just a confidence bait for me. A dragon bait. If you're dragging something, that's I'm using a pretty light head, lighter than I want to. I caught them all on the light head yesterday. Nothing on the heavier head. I did catch one this morning on the on the heavier head, biffle biffle head though. But it was up on top um, instead of out here on the. The currents obviously got a lot to do with it when you get them. As with any lake, when when currents running, it's just it's always better. Just explain there what he was fishing. We kind of yeah. thought the shell bed comes all the way up to two feet of mm. water. Now I can see him pretty good right there. That's my spot right there. I got a good glimpse of him right there. Hope they're bass. Looking at some numbers compiled by Shea Baker, we had uh, the 10 fish over four pounds, they were 55 over three pounds. The best hour, eight to nine had 12 fish that uh, the over three pounders, and 12 to one had 13. So hmm. we could expect some big bites after lunch, or at lunch. Um, I'm still gonna say not as good as yesterday. Not as good as that. yesterday? But a better start this morning, so it might all equal out. <clears throat> I think the water pulling has hurt Brandon Polnick, but it's helped some people, some other people uh, that are not fishing back in the backs of those creeks like Brandon. Started to see that at Neely Henry in 2021, Tommy. Every single day the tournament went on, Todd Otten's backwater spot didn't work out as well, and we started seeing everybody on the main lake, mid-river, yeah. start really getting on that main drag. Yeah, all together. Just crossed over into our fourth hour of eight hours of fishing on the second day of competition at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite on Lay Lake. Bernie Schultz took over that lead early from Brandon Polnick and he is hanging on to it. Brian New, though, just ounces behind Shakira, Downey, Klaus, and all the rest. And we have more, much more to come. Yeah! Another! No way! Woo! 
Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Pushing on through day number two, very important day here at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. Those are the six anglers that we are in the boat with all day long. There is a full field though of 104 out there for the second day in a row and you gotta push your way into that top 50 if you're not in there yet. Let's take it out to the man who started the day with the lead with 19 pounds plus on day number one, Brandon Polony. Biggin. No, oh yeah, yeah, that's a freaking giant. <clears throat> Blind pitched her. Where's she going? <sighs> Stay on there, girl. Blind pitched a giant. Toward the grass. Not toward the grass. Come back this way. Come back this way. Come back this way. Come back this way. Turn your head. Turn your head. Turn your head. Turn your head. There you go. There you go. There you go. Come here. Come here. Oh no! Get open your mouth. Yes. Giant one. Oh, good thing that thing floats. Oh my gosh. Mm. Freaking stud. Gosh dang. Now I'm really mad that I lost that one earlier because we'd have a we'd have a really good bag. I can't believe I just blind pitched that thing. Oh bug eyes. Oh, Kyle, I thought you were on that side. I'm sorry. I just saw a boat over there. I didn't know who it was. Five and a quarter. Yes. Gosh dang, look at how pretty that thing is. I'm pretty sure that one's pre-spawn. You don't, you don't need a clip on and you can go in your own side. Golly. Oh, what a mess. Well, you talk about got 11 pounds. Anglers running around and fishing Whew. one dam and the other. Whew. I think we had one or two anglers say they did that Soon yesterday. Brandon right. Polnick just keeping his hook in the gosh, water and it's really, really paid off for him. Absolutely. He was. You know how he much. He's letting his place change. He said that the current is now picked up in here. I, I want to leave, but I can't. Can't quite pull a trigger. Golly. He has moved out towards the mouth a little more. Yeah, I not, think he was working his way out to leave. Pump. I bet he doesn't leave yeah, much yet. <laughs> not just right. super stick fell out. And that was just that was not pretty, but it worked. My biggest fear was that she was gonna get wrapped up in in that thing. Well, guys, every single Bassmaster Elite Series event, big bass matter, especially with the bodies of water we go to, Okeechobee, Seminole, Murray, Santee Cooper, places like that. Big fish are influential, but it seems like they're a lot more prevalent at times, so the ability to catch four five-pounders is there. At Lay Lake this week, that's not necessarily been the case. Our day one leader, Brandon Polinick, we just saw him catch a big one, and we know the importance of that. He mentioned it yesterday. I caught a 514 in the morning, and the way I caught him, that's not duplicate. I can't duplicate that. It's not duplicatable, as he said, and so he had the the clue that he had going into day one, he lost it going into today, but he is definitely salvaging it and figuring it out as he goes along. And when we look at that, 19.7 looks great. When you have over a quarter of that in one fish, you wonder how you're going to replace that the next day. Is my overall average going to go up or do I still kind of depend on catching a five plus pounder? As we see 
the standings down the leaderboard from the top. We got 45th place just above the 50 cut line down to 60th, about 15 spots. And guys, I'll just scroll and you can see ounce by ounce you go a position. 11-6, 11-8, 11-9, 11-10, 11-10. There are so many ties and so many one ounce moves for two or three spots it seems that today's, if you're looking at Bass Track, there's a couple different tabs. One of the tabs being the Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the Day. And you can see each one of those influential ones Kind of listed from heaviest to lightest. Brian News 510 at 9 o'clock is the biggest of the day. Bernie Schultz, Kenta Kamira, Cole Sands, all those five pounders Such mentioned earlier. So influential for making the cut, making a big move today. Guys like Justin Hamner, Joseph Webster, uh, Alabama anglers that right around that cut line need a good kicker. There they got it this morning. And then guys like Wes Logan, Drew Benton, Jacob Fouts who need a comeback effort today. A 312, a four, a four and a quarter. So we're seeing the impact of a a big bite really come into factor this week. Normally, after one day, two days, you'd like to have at least one kicker in your bag. Uh, it seems like if you're going to want to be in contention now that Brandon Polinick, Bernie Schultz are kind of setting that standard, you may need one per day if you want to be in contention by the end of the week. Is it going to take a five pounder every day to win this tournament, Dave? Ah, you know, it's stacking up that way, but I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I. Uh... What about what, what about an on average one a day? Like somebody catches two fives in a day and then they don't catch one one day. Do you count that? I mean, that's a you know four or five pounders go a long way. I, I still go out on a limb and say the winner will not have five. I will not have four fish over five pounds. Okay. It's just it's just hard to do. I yeah. think the winner's obviously going to have to have three of them, uh, but I don't know if you have to have one every single day. Yeah. I think now we're on pace. Or we will be very shortly with Brandon Polinick's fish once he gets entered into Bass Track that we're on pace for that. He'll be around that 30 pound mark and mm -hmm. we were our over under coming in was would 15 pounds a day win it. Yeah. Yep. 60 pounds for four days and he'll be halfway there. Granted we were halfway to a century mark uh, by a certain angler at Santee Cooper who ended up you know falling off on the weekend so we'll see yeah. if they can keep it up. We he, got, he got rid of everything below two yesterday right? For Polinick? Yeah. Yeah, I remember, yes. yeah, he had those two, two late and a half fish. Really. Yeah. 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 Yep, two and a half. He's doing a good job here with the water falling. He's, he's kind of giving up on the grass, and he's using his 360. He's using his uh, Mega Live forward imaging and the 360, looking for some kind of subtle differences out in this flat, because uh, all of this stuff is silted in so badly. But there's still some stumps that are a little bit as, you know, um, enough for a bass to relate to some type of cover. So uh, he's really maximizing this this area, and we've seen it hold up for four days before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say one thing that Trip Weldon mentioned about the grass at Lay Lake. I, I was impressed seeing the visuals of the aerials and and the anglers fishing yesterday. Just how much grass there is on Lay Lake. A lot of bodies of water. You know, people are trying to influence how much grass there is, and with them having a relatively cool spring for the most part not really getting into summer there was so much grass growth that that to me seems like a positive sign going forward for hopefully if the water doesn't fluctuate too much these fish have a healthy spawn next year years after that we start to see that that's what they they said Neely Henry's had a couple good spawns since we were there for the elites that that, yeah, that Neely's on the uprise as well well the grass is the key that's keeping this place good and and you say is it really good well this time frame that I really like to fish in with a lot of different things going on is really not the best time to showcase uh, the fishery. Uh, I think if, if we were here a week or two later or a few weeks ago, the weights would be better, but um, it just shows uh, what vegetation in a, in a body of water can do, even with as much pressure as it gets. It's still a good light. Yeah, granted, we could have if we could have 10 Elite Series events in the month of April, we probably would because everywhere seems to be better just around that mm -hmm. month. But you got to showcase different reasons and kind of put these guys to the test. I don't mind making them work once or two, one oh, or two absolutely. events a year. Oh, absolutely. I think it's necessary to. Hank Weldon always liked to make the college guys. After you earn your qualification in the championship, he's going to make the championship the hardest venue you've ever been oh, to God. all year. Yeah. I always appreciated that. And <laughs> Maybe it's shaped and molded a quarter of our Elite Series field into who they are today. Brandon Lester surprisingly started yesterday in 100th place. He's got a nice limit going. He's in 44th now trying to make that cut. Oh, wow. Good for him.
A little surprised Matt Airy doesn't have it, more than a couple of fish right now. Yeah, and he's kind of up the river, but not at the dam. He's like in that no man's land of the river bends. I, I think we see him brand new and Matt Airy, although they're fishing differently, fishing this a lot like Wiley, mm -hmm. like Lake Wiley. Matt Airy up the river, but not going up, you know, all the way to the dam. You know, we saw at Wiley uh, how good the river can be a few miles down. I think well, that's what Matt is doing. And then obviously Brian New fishing a little bit of water willow in the morning and then boat docks with a jig. Matt might have been day. at the Childersburg Bridge right there, but he was visualizing Buster Boyd. Right. And exactly. trying, to, trying to make that work at Wiley. About the same size fisheries, aren't they? Wiley yes. And, and, yes. And yeah. Lay. yeah. Both have had their upturns and downturns. Seems like a lot of these lakes that we've been to this year are real cyclical, so it's good to see some of them come back, like Murray. It's good to see some of the big fish, Okeechobee still showing up, things like that. Well, you want action, you want movement up and down the leaderboard, you want to see some big fish? <laughs> we started out with that today, the big fish with Bernie Schultz. Big old spot. Yeah, big That's spot fun. first and then hmm. followed that one up. Giant largemouth. Yes, he did. Put himself on top ahead of this man, Brandon Polinick, who started the day with the lead. Brandon Polinick doing a great job, uh, just just putting his trolling motor down and fishing. Yeah. Uh, caught a few off the bed yesterday. Caught one or two off the bed this morning. Back to Bernie Schultz. Uh, I guess when him and Brandon are kind of firing back and forth, shots across the bow. He's just gonna grab the buzz bait blade yeah, and bring him yeah. on in the boat. Why not? <laughs> Good five pounder, five. All right, baby. Ten? Something like that. Now here's the 510. That's the 510 that Brian knew. 510 wow. make you throw your rod and reel in. I like to see those ones. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe Bernie's is a little higher than five, what it's listed at 5'2". We'll see if he can make it to 5'10 like Brian knew. Took him almost halfway through the season to get his big highlight of the year, and that was it right there for sure. So we maybe expect more to come today from yeah. Lay Lake. Who knows what is coming up next? I can tell you coverage-wise what is coming up next. Uh, we'll have some live mix for you for the next one hour. So our live coverage continues. And after that, uh, Dave Mercer, it says Dave and Overstreet. Jay, Dave and Dave, uh, James Overstreet will be taken over then and we'll be back for the final two hours. The Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapalot.
Eagle time. Still some feeding going on right there. I'm not feeding on buzzbait, so. I mean, this was big fish down here yesterday. This is where I lost that four and I caught that five. I caught another one about three. Just from here to those flowers down there.
come off that piece of wood. Yeah, it's, it's gonna hurt where we're going. I think it'll hurt it, yeah. We haven't moved far, but we've moved areas just a little bit. Moved creeks. Let's see if we can pick a few off over here. I left this alone yesterday because I had a, such a good bag early. And I didn't, I couldn't see the fish over here, so I didn't want to come over here and just end up blindly catching two to three pounders. I figured it would be much more useful today. Come on, fish. Lots of moments of slow times with little spurts of excitement. As long as they're five pounder excitements, it'll be all right.
Did one just flash right there? That was weird. I don't know what it was. It looked like a green bass flashing. It's weird. I'd for sure set the hook way too hard and break it off. I just don't get why there wouldn't be one spawning by that boulder. I mean, that's like primo looking stuff. But they're not. If it looks too good, there's no bass. Is that bluegill? One of the most amazing things about this classic is the fishing freaks that showed up here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at that crowd. It is for the fans. <laughs> Blast off, there's all the media, the fans, family. You're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. This is a giant bass! All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Gussie gets it done! They'd catch one.
back on live mix. And you're still at home, you're still seeing that same yellow slide over there. Decided to move off of that little spot just a little ways for a little bit, just to thinking maybe the boat <coughs> sitting there. If I leave it alone a little bit, maybe the boat not being there, they'll group up a little bit. I'm not sure if they will or not, but I'm not gonna get too far though. I really have nothing else to do. Like I said 25 times to myself today, it's hard to. If I had something else to do, I'd probably do it, but I can't. Waiting for that window. Maybe I'll get an opportunity to, for a couple of good ones before the day's out. I don't know if I will or not. But. Mm. Stick.
Somebody trying to be sneaky. We're still alive. This is probably about as boring as watching paint dry for everybody at home. We're getting a little bit of wind that's coming out of the right direction now, coming straight down the channel like it was yesterday. I hope that maybe that'll
Oh look, it's raining again, great. Might be. God, I missed him. I think I missed him. Yeah, I missed him. Stick pounder. Yeah. He got half my sinker. You see that? Oh, boy. I hate. That might be thunder. That'd be just great. Nice little thunderstorm. Fantastic. Yeah, I know that's exactly what you want. The one at Santee? Yeah, final day. Oh. There's fish. There's more fish in that little pile right there. I just got to get one of them to commit to my worm a little bit better. Don't make me put my rain suit back on, please.
gosh. Look at that. Guarantee you that's a pretty good fish too. Just the way he bit, I felt like it was a pretty good fish. The Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Welcome back to On Location Coverage. It is day number two, stop five of the Bassmaster Elite Series. And we're officially at the halfway point of the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. And what better spot to do it than the birth state of Bassmaster in the great state of Alabama for the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. And look at atop the leaderboard, Brandon Polinick, your day one leader, is once again in the lead with 30 pounds and three ounces. And Bernie Schultz had a big event just two events ago. And look out, he's knocking on the door here again in second place, Brian New. A literally a nightmare season up to this point. A angler that has had no tough times at all was sitting in 101st coming into this event in Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. Not anymore. New continues to climb that leaderboard and our leaderboard this week. Davey Hyde is in the studio, and I am joined by my road brother, James Overstreet, Bassmaster photographer, and uh, a lot of history just pulling into Lay Lake here, man. You think about all the great events that have been here in the past. I do, Dave. When we came here the first morning, we got out of the truck. The sun came up, and uh, I guess the last tournament I worked here, the last two were Bassmaster Classics, and the, there's a lot of history right here behind us, especially on the other side of that bridge over there where Brandon is. Uh, I spent a lot of time over there and uh, out here in Beeswax Creek, uh, the last classic I worked here. So, yeah, this is uh, – if there's an amphitheater for bass fishing, it's right there on the other side of that bridge. That's as close as I've seen. Do you remember a tournament where it literally, you know, they always sandbag. But do you remember a tournament where after the day one way and you're like, I, I said that to you last night at dinner. I'm like, does anybody think they're going to catch a bass on day two? Like it literally felt like even your tournament leaders from first place to last place standings was scratching their head after yesterday. No, I think from top to bottom, it was most of the field was pretty much thinking uh Today was going to be just a day. They didn't know what they were going to do. Brandon's going to go back to the back of the creek, but it, he's catching them. But, look, it's slow. It's slow for everybody. The whole lake's slow. So I think for once, they they probably shot us pretty straight on the practice. Well, they were honest with us, but we'll be honest with you on everything that's been going on here on the water. This, a look at your playing field. Lay Lake, 12,000 acres, a pretty small body of water by Elite Series standards, especially if you look at some of the giant bodies of water that we have been to already this year. But it's not about the last four events. It's about stop number five, the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite. And let's catch everybody up on all the doings on day number two with your Toyota Midday Report from beautiful Lay Lake. And let's start with Gary Klaus, the 2012 PAA Angler of the Year, and having a great tournament yeah. street. Yeah, you see Gary out there offshore. A lot of guys around grass. Gary's one of the guys that's out there offshore. Uh, he's found those fish that are moving back out to the main channel out there and uh, pretty much staying in that one area, getting it done, though. Good to see Gary Klaus inside our top ten. Hope to have him around all the way through till Sunday. As he tries to drive to his ultimate goal and make the Bassmaster Classic. Speaking of goals, he's got to right the ship, and he's doing it this week. Brian New, good to see him finally catching him. Yeah, earlier I saw him. Fish catching. Here it is. We show it right here. It's a 
They caused the fish catch of the morning right here. They called that. So uh, no doubt this is a good one here. Skipping up on a jig it's under a dock. It's hard to beat that kind of fishing day, day, Mercer. Yeah. God, I'm my... No jig bite had to feel good. Uh, how good does that feel? Speaking of good, always perpetually good looking hairdo. Bernie Schultz once again threatening spot, for this dude. title. That's fine. Hmm. There we go. Street, he has been around for a long, long time, but I mean that that is one of those feel good stories. If we were to see Bernie win here this week. Well, no, I mean, you know, we I guess as guys that work with bass or for bass, whatever, we're not supposed to be cheerleaders, but my Barney's baby. been around since 92. I mean, brother could probably use the trophy. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And let me be honest. If we're not allowed to be cheerleaders, I probably would have been fired a long time ago because I, I'm a pretty <laughs> – I wear a lot of pom-poms for this guy, Brandon yeah. Polinick. Yes, yeah, who you aptly – well, I guess you coined him the prodigy several years ago, and and I in turn – you, know, you and I hang out a lot. I – tend to refer to him as the golden child. <laughs> he is the golden child. And yeah. After a tough start to the season. But he was one of those dudes on stage that said that he wanted to catch enough weight in day one so he didn't have to catch one in day two because he didn't know whether he could. Well, obviously, he has been able to figure it out. And the way this fishery's fishing, you got to think he's going to be a big threat just simply because he's one of those anglers that is able to just scrap everything and fish what's in front of him right and what's surprising to me though in a way is and i didn't know if it'd play or not is how do these thunder sticks get so possession of that area back there on the other side of that bridge and when he's i mean everybody knows what goes down back there but kevin van dam ends up with that place back there to himself and brandon's got it Early on, last few boats kind of slipped in here under the bridge. They did the same thing to Kevin when he won the Classic That's back deeper. here. But, you know, here we go again. So. Not a big keeper. That may be the one to allow him to uh, have this hold up. Do you like Nobody else back there. If he can keep that to himself. Yeah. He was the only one in that area on day one. Mm -hmm. I saw a little help he's in there this morning with him. Okay. Um, but I don't I don't think they got very far back in there where he's at, but and didn't stay long and uh, oh. you know, that's just kinda how it works sometimes. But uh, last time I looked back there I took a little drive over there just before we went came on like live and uh, he's twice the one left back there right went now. Through Paul Nick obviously only four fish in the life well. Covering this tournament from all angles, you know, we've, we've got, you know, a lot of on-boat footage and some aerial footage, which is basically, if we could wave, we're right below that tent right there, and he's coming right over our head, which means Brian knew not far from us. Mm -hmm. No, he's, di yeah, he's directly behind us, actually, across there. Wow. Incredible shot from our takeoff venue. I've had Out the to bites Brian today. New. You know, unfortunately, I've lost four of them. Um, the plus is definitely got enough to make the cut. The negative is had enough to probably have a pretty decent lead. Enough bites. Uh, but we got a lot of time left. Just kind of came in here close to takeoff, very close to takeoff, trying to just catch a release fish or two. And um, so far it hasn't went so well. But I did catch a, I call it a keeper spot in here yesterday in a, in a small keeper largemouth as well. I would take those right now. We've got, you know, four hours, a little over four hours. We don't come in until 3.30. So we've got plenty of time. I mean, we really just need three bites. We just got a cap.
Uh, really was fortunate yesterday. Everything went right. Didn't didn't lose any. And today, I was fortunate that I didn't lose the two I did. Especially the one great big. You catch one like that Speaking on this that lake. Looks like staying around docks. That's kind of been his deal. Looks like this morning. I, I didn't see what he did yesterday, but. Doc seemed to be the deal for him. I was surprised the grass was so far along here. Um, of course, we live in Arkansas latitudes about the same. Grass seems to be much further along here when I got here, how lush and, and all it was. But uh, having a bit of a time catching them out of some of that grass. Yeah, the amount of pressure on this body mm. of water. I mean, well, maybe I should just stick with the jig. Bassmaster Elite Series in town. It did I not stop the Thursday to... nighter happening last night. It <laughs> no, still no. happened. It's got to go on. At Willowee's probably seen a few swim jigs, I would I would imagine. A few buzz baits buzzing over it and that sort of thing. Just a few. Boy, new, and he's been very open about it, and he's talked about how close – Although this season has truly been a nightmare up to this point for him, it's been so close mm. to being right. I mean, literally one little decision wrong, and it just shows just how volatile this sport is. Yeah, and you see how it can go the other way, too. Uh, you know, that's the same with momentum. You can get on that good train or that bad train, and then you can ride either one for a while if you let it. But he, he does really. I think he knows he's good enough to turn it around. Yeah, Come and on, you see Mr. that. Bass. You see that already happening. Yeah, I've never. There's times when you have conversations with anglers, mm -hmm. and and they're they feel lost. Right. They're like, I just don't know. None of the conversations I've had with him were those. It was just like, man, it's, it's frustrating how it keeps happening limit, to me. But, but I know I'm going to get out of this. Yeah, I mean, when I talked to Brian new about his deal, I, I talked to him actually. You know, we. We have those conversations in the morning a lot of times on the dock with some of these guys. I, I still consider it fairly early. And, you know, it's kind of just quit. And, and then some, you, you know, you can do a lot. I, of, I need some encouragement, but, you know, they're down, dude. And, and But he's, that's the difference with him. He's not no, down, you know, he's a, not beat down by what's been going on. It's just uh, moving it in and can. moving around. You can Out on the water right happen. now, live with Christy Polnick, Arian like Schultz. The water being low, plus you know us and other guys fishing through here. I feel like we've. Oh, something. That was weird. That looks like a really good spot. And swore something nipped it. But I think we've just depleted a lot of this. Bluegill biting it or what that was? You see, it's just a little darker right there. I don't know if there's a little, like a little stump on the bottom or something. Must not have been an aggressive five pounder. He's moved way out. He's closer out by the bridge now, where he was all the way back in the back. So I don't, I don't know if he's working his way out. Or he's just giving that t that place time to rest further back. Or how is it possible that? I mean, it's. Just, I just find it amazing that he got it to himself. Well, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, well, you and I, I, I mentioned that to you. How do you? As in this field, allow Kevin Van Dam and Brandon Polinick to have that back there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you two know? different tournaments I being mean, dominated do by you, them. you know, sometimes, I mean, does it, does it a deal where you overthink it? You say, oh, well, you know, back of beeswax, it'll be covered up. You know, uh, uncharacteristically tough season by his standards. I think he was kind of in the mid 60s in progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points coming into this event. But, uh, you know, 
as frustrating as that may be for Jason Christie and the standard he sets, there is a bunch of great, you know, look at our next fisheries. We're going to go to Orange, Texas, Sabine River. He won there. Right. Then we're going to go to Lake St. Clair. He won there. Right. <laughs> yeah, he'll be all right. He'll be fine. Yes. I'm not, and, he, you know, he fishes good and mad. <laughs> Today has been opposite of yesterday. Yesterday I got a quick start. You know, I caught like 10 pounds in the first 30 minutes and we only got one of those bites this morning. And so then I went to plan B, which is frogging how I caught the majority of the weight yesterday and even though yesterday was cloudy too it was it was different like those fish wanted to get up there and I've just not caught anything in the stuff it's all been just around you know the good thing is is I really ain't got nothing else to do I start thinking about you know, going to the river channel out there, but I did that for two hours. I don't know, I'm just gonna, it's been a lot slower. I mean, I've got, I've got just as many bites on the frog already, but they just, they're really small. I had one decent one, but just nothing really, nothing to brag about so far. You know, yesterday it just, it was just like one bite an hour, one bite every hour and a half. That was good. So, we had a little wind yesterday and it's just so calm. It's hard to, you know, get around these pads and stuff without touching them and moving them because it's so shallow because the water's come down. So, just going to fish and hopefully catch what bites all I can do. Jason Christie currently in 15th place. And as he said, a much different day than yesterday, but a lot of time ahead here. And the second day of the fifth stop of 2023, the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. Got to whittle our field down to the top 50, but that'll look at our top 10 right now. Hey, look at in 10th place, Caleb Sumrall, another guy trying to recover after a tough, tough start to the season. And then that scary Steve Kendi keeps hanging around there. You don't you don't want to let him loose on the weekend, do you? No, nah, he's got him. Yeah. He's coming, but nobody has more than Brandon Polnick, your leader right now. We'll be <laughs> right back. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Welcome back to our on location coverage, and that a great aerial shot of where it's all going down. Uh, Beeswax Creek Park in Shelby County, Alabama, the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. And the weather has been fairly hospitable, I would say, up to this point. Had a giant storm last night, but as long as it keeps running through in the evening, we'll be good. Let's have a look at our weather. A TH Marine Weather Watch, currently 72 degrees, partly cloudy with light winds. You would think a perfect day to fish. Well, tomorrow's going to be a little warmer, 87 degrees, with a low of 66, partly cloudy, and showers possible. And we'll find out what's going to happen on Championship Sunday when we get to Championship Sunday. Let's not get carried away. Let's focus on trying to get our top 50 to go into the weekend. And now out live with Matt Airy, Bernie Schultz, Brandon Polnick, and Gary Klaus. Starting to see a little Alabama uh, in the top 10. Yesterday, we kind of talked about how some of our Alabama guys didn't quite uh, make the show, and we thought they might. But you look there now. 
What's that? Four right. Alabama Which guys there. Channel comes right here. Here. Will Davis Jr., Matt Heron, Justin Atkins, Justin Hamner, Steve Kennedy. That's five. 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 Yeah, half the top ten. Got one. Here we go, Brandon. I almost wonder if there's a bed there, and this is the male, and that was the female. Cause that other one was a way bigger. I'm not so sure she didn't chase it. He should sadly help. And if you look at the leaderboard, it looks like second and third are pretty distant to him, but Pay attention to how many fish they have. Right, they still got plenty of room oh to uh, close that gap with three fish each. So, Pound and, a quarter. and um, we ended up with first He's and third in here for a while, pounds. Dave. We had Brandon back here, and then uh, right out here it's behind us had uh, Brian New. Brian New has since uh, moved on during the break. I wasn't sure about him. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I think he's just fine though. I guess I should have left the clip on him. I didn't put it on him because he was acting kind of funky. But I got him. I got him. Okay. Four on that side. One big one on that side. Nice doing business with you, buddy. Okay. Yeah. We're all good in there. He's very careful with his culling. I believe he holds the all-time record for the most. I wonder if there's a bed right there. Amount of six fish penalties. <laughs> I think he's done it like three times. Could have been. Yeah, he's had some. He's running through all the adventures and calling seen and landing fish in the past. You know, that just makes me think. Female worm was sitting there shaking and shaking it, and when I ripped it out, probably came across the bed, and she chased it, and I pitched right back in there. And you know she may not have even gotten back there yet, and that one bit just makes me think that there could be a bed there. Maybe we'll get lucky and she'll just be locked on it. <laughs> Normally they don't uh, don't like it when you steal their bo boyfriend much though. Yeah, the one that first came rolling out of there was not a pound and a quarter, I can promise you that. It was a much but Pollock larger is at the top of his game. It, what, like specimen. watching him compete, just how relaxed he is, how he doesn't get rattled, how fluid he is available to, you know, it doesn't get stuck to one pattern. Right. I mean, this is, I mean, it's easy to say because he's the reigning angler of the year, but this is the best ball neck we've ever seen. Well, it's like a quarterback here. I'm saying the game slows down for him. And I think what that means is, is your, your decision-making becomes so much clearer, too. You, you don't have all these thoughts that are cluttering your mind. It's you, you, Every decision you make seems to be the right one. There's no angst. There's no hurry. There's no... He's not looking around. I mean, you know, what do I do next? I mean, there's, it's always, he's always confident in, in where he's at, where his feet are planted. Wherever that was moved. And uh, he's going to stick it out. Yeah. It's a long day when you're out there and you, you just don't know what to do. Anything. You know, you just, uh, a lot of indecision. You want to move around sometimes. Oh, not a giant. But, well, but it's a good one. He's not that big. Thought he was way bigger than that. Like I literally can't remember the last time I've seen him visibly look Come like he feels the big. moment. 
even the angler of the year and everything last year, and as stressed as he was, there was never a time where I saw him leave the dock feeling like... Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Oh, God. Any kind of pressure whatsoever. No, nah, he's really he just low. Not too high, never too low. Thank you. But I think if you, if you look at his early career victories yeah. and stuff, you see a lot of that. What to do. I mean, trying to jam his fist in a fish's face, <laughs> getting the hook and in. freaking out. But he's just so Fine. perfectly balanced Not right now. Other side. Oh, leave your mouth open. Go in behind the gill plate. He's in a good place in life. I mean, new baby. Yeah. New, he's, things, life is good. If I can get a hold of that hook. When you can get out the there and fishing, is all you. That's all you got to do, dude. It's and rotate. It's got to be nice. Out. Put this like that. Brandon Polnick getting that fish unhooked and out, dealing with there, a call it, there. And from an aerial shot of Brandon Polnick, we'll head out to Team Toyota's Matt Airy, and he had a big day yesterday. Got four fish in the live well. God, please stay on. Oh. Gosh, I didn't get a good hook in him, and I know, I knew, I didn't get a good hook in him. <sighs> but it was hooked better than I thought. That is number five, and that's a pretty solid bass there. Mm-hmm. All right. Just using that active target, using that Lawrence active target to see this wood, this scattered wood out here on these flats, on this shallower bank here. And all that's doing is providing just little current breaks for these spots to set up behind. I, I, I got a quite a bit of bo bites doing this in practice, but it's been a little bit disappointing during the tournament so far. It's uh. It hadn't produced, and the only difference is it's been really cloudy the last couple of days. Maybe they haven't sucked that wood, but I would have thought in this current it wouldn't have made much difference. So, what's been your uh, your key baits? You've been uh, mostly just soft plastics, a couple of different stick baits, um, and uh, finesse worms, trick worms, things like that. Uh, mostly all soft plastics quarter ounce, three sixteenth ounce weights, just just kind of pulling it over that wood and letting the current kind of push it through it. And uh, like I said, I was able to generate a lot of bites in practice doing that. This was not the, the, the way to catch a big bag, but um, at least it didn't seem to be. The grass, I think, is still the deal to, to really produce a big, big bag. But I'd like to call out that little bitty one before we go flipping some grass. And if we can do that. Just because you're in the middle of a tournament doesn't you mean you don't have time to do our Bass Pro Shops Top Lures. Today I kind of I kind of retreated. I kind of threw up the white flag and came in the river to try to go ahead and fill my limit. And it's taken us till 1130 to do that. Now, I uh, we call out that 12-incher, which we got a couple 12-inchers in there. But if we call out the, the line burner 12-incher, we can get back down the lake and try to catch a big large mouth. we got two I don't mind laying in. So, we, uh, we need to do some culling, bottom line. But I'm thankful to have what I got because it has been a pretty challenging day so far. I have noticed a lot of these creeks, I've had some places where I thought I could get a lot of bites, catch seven or eight pounds, one in particular at the mouth of a, a little pocket and a couple of mouths of those drains been pretty good, but they, uh, that big storm we had last night, a lot of them are blown out. So kind of took those out of play. I thought about that overnight thing, but how much runoff we would have from that, because it did come a good one late last night. 
So Ooh, I thought I was gonna lose. Matt oh, talk about Sucker, that. you see him chasing me? Areas. <laughs> it looked like about a 10 incher, but he chased my worm in. But I did not get a good hook in that fish. It, it hit it close to the boat. I came over that last little piece of wood there. And when I set the hook on it, I was like, oh no, I don't think I hooked it good. Boy, it did storm last night. Uh, it's a really, really, line. like, I mean, the, the ditches were flooded, like, <laughs> literally. They were Ten flooded. minutes into the storm. <laughs> and that was before we went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, it got even worse. Gosh, yeah, the south had a lot of rain here. Don't know if there was much to him. It's also basically this time of year in the south. I mean, every day is basically a <laughs> chance of thunder showers. <laughs> Alabama chance of tornadoes, but it's cloudy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of rain. I mean, there's just one front after another. I mean, you know, most of the lakes are high at home. I'm, and I'm sure, you know, the moment what we get that comes over here. So a lot of fresh water in all the, in the lakes right now. Kind of got things messed up a little bit too. Probably not helping a whole lot. A lot of water fluctuation going on with some of these lakes in different places. Lots changing, and as we predicted after day number one, you're going to see a lot of changes in the leaderboard, a lot of moving going on, but not at the very top. Brandon Polnick still leading with 31 pounds at 15 ounces, but so many great stories in there. Justin Hamner, Justin Atkins, both anglers who really need big events. Matt Heron, you would have expected him to be here. Alex Redwine, we've been waiting for you. Uh, yeah. Will Davis Jr., he's pretty comfortable here. Jace Shakirik, not bad. Brian New, welcome back. Bernie Schultz, everyone loves you. And everybody loves the prodigy. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Welcome back to our on-location coverage in that a beautiful aerial shot of your tournament leader, the prodigy Brandon Polnick atop the leaderboard for the second day in a row at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake in Shelby County, Alabama. Stop number five of 2023, and today marks the halfway point of the season. So if you want to win yourself a Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Rookie of the Year title, you better keep the wheels on or start catching them. But he has not faltered at all since the beginning of the season. You look at Will Davis Jr., Bryant Smith, David Gasson, Joey Sequentes, like Cooper Gallant, all of them have had, like our rookie of the year list, Koya Fujita, all of them have had big moments here this year early on. They have top tens out of, those, out of that group, several top tens. And that deal there is going to get mixed up, I would think. When we go north, that, that, that thing's going to shift around quite a bit because looking at the top ten there, uh, probably not a lot of experience with some of those guys and a lot of experience out of a few. So we'll see what happens when we get up north. Keep your eye on Cooper Gallant. Yep. Small mouth country, so he'll be, he'll, be, uh, he'll be coming when we get up there. I'm, uh, I want to see. I want to get fajita. Yeah, Koya. Uh, Koya, yeah. What, what he does there. right of my cursor. With his knowledge of electronics on smallmouth, I'm like, it's going to be interesting to watch what he does with his wall of graphs. Speaking of electronics, let's listen into Paul Nick. They're directly to the right of the boat. And I got bass off of them. Look at that. Where are you going? Should help. Well, that was cool. Come on. Come on. Don't really like how you're hooked, but oh, he'll definitely help. Mm. A little brim eater. See the smallest fish there is a cool that? <laughs> See all the little white <laughs> dots? All the little brim on that bed? Or all over the brim beds? Just keep dragging your 
drop shot around till it, till it ticks. Nice. See what I mean? Like, look how relaxed and nonchalant. Like, <laughs> it's like our second biggest fish of the day. <laughs> That's cool. What number was that? Ho hum. Number two. Hey. You know, postal workers deliver the mail, and and Brandon Paul <laughs> catches bass. He's just doing his job. That's the little upgrade. Yeah, upgrade. Sweet. Nice job. Not too bad. Good job. Now we're closer to 14. Not bad. <laughs> Check my cameras. But just, hmm? just keep guess grinding I'll go back away. To I said we're yeah, going to be here. Yeah, just out there on the lake. <laughs> Not if I keep getting bit. We'll dive slid up in a second. Different stuff. Bernie caught us fourth there. I didn't know that that there. That's why so that 360 felt so much like I was talking about earlier. Yeah, was crazy because I had pitched for around him. all that grass, right? So you can visibly see the grass with your eyeballs, no bites. The 360, between the grass, there's a broom bed that you can't see with your eyeballs unless you see it on your 360. And really, those fish are on broom beds. Any one of those times I set the hook could be a four to five pounder, easily. There to the right of my cursor is the broom beds. You can see the little white dots in it. Turn this sensitivity up. They're directly to the right of the boat. And I got bass off of them. Where are you going? He sh should help. Well, that was cool. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Don't really like how you're hooked, but oh, he'll definitely help. A little brim eater. How cool is that? <laughs> See all the little white dots? All the little brim on that bed? Or all over the brim beds? Just keep dragging your drop shot around. Till it, till it ticks. Back out live with Paul Nick, and that's some amazingly that cool. educational stuff. Mike's in. Yeah, the game changed, Dave. <laughs> it has, but some things one, remain the same. Paul Nick, once again, hooked up. Hey, 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 hey. I guess there was another one on it. I mean, look, I like literally made that cast right there. I am going to mark that. We'll mark it as fish for right now, but I can go back and change that. I don't know if he's gonna help or not. I still have a... That 189 that we caught over there is our smallest. I don't think he's gonna be bigger than that. This is more like a 150, 160. 178, you're just shy, buddy. I do appreciate you though. I do appreciate your willingness and your attitude. Okay. That seems to be good times happening for Paul Nick today. Pretty relaxed, 
In the driver's seat right now with 31 pounds, 15 That's ounces. So darn deceiving. As you said, Will Davis moved into second. The bass Bernie Schultz slid to third. Just so deceiving to the bass. That one just kept running at me. I was nervous it was going to turn and be really big. Yeah, you can't really see on live. Now, if, if I scanned live over there, you would see all the little brim. You'd see all these little dots along the bottom. But you... If... From our tournament leader, Brandon Polnick to the pride of Winchester, Tennessee. Gary Klaus having a great event here this week. Four fish in the live well. Sweet. He's wild and crazy. I didn't want to take a chance. Come here. <clears throat> there we go. There we go. Good spot. Good thick one. I want you to look at that. I want you to look at this. So, so this was in the fish's mouth. That's an old one. As you can tell, it's been in the lake for a while, so I don't know if he picked it up off the bottom or what, but that's one of my bugs um, that uh, he brought back to me. <laughs> he thought I was out of them, so he brought me one. All right, number five. I gotta get rid of a couple. That was a good confidence builder there. Retie that line. I actually thought that was going to be a Fish big one. didn't just bring up That's all right. old bugs. Had some shad with him too. Makes you wonder if it's that fish that got off this morning. If that's the same one that um, possible. But he, you know, he got off and I don't remember if that bug was still on the bait when I got it in this morning or not. I said I was going to catch that fish again. So Gary Klaus fills out his limit. And he's definitely going to be fishing with us on semifinal Saturday. Out live, Jason Christie, Polnick, Matt Airy, and Bernie Schultz. I know Paul Nick doesn't like to pay attention to progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. But right. Unofficially, if he can stay up in the top of this tournament, a lot of people early on in this season said, uh, well, he's probably not going to be able to defend his title. If you look at Angler of the Year right now, he's sitting in the top 20 in Angler of the Year. So well, if we go like this. I'm saying there's a chance and a big, big chance, especially with the fisheries we're heading to. Oh, there's absolutely a chance for him. Five. You can just see some of those little. There's always a chance every year for him right now. I mean, he's just around. in that stage of his career. He's gonna, he's gonna contend. We need a little of that in fishing, though. We need that with a little Joe Burrow. The chance. The when when is your Super Bowl window? My entire career. Do you think we could get Paul Nick to say something like that on stage? <laughs> uh, 
I don't know if he's sad or not, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't feel oh, that whoa, way. Whoa, whoa, Ooh, whoa, Bernie got whoa, on number five. Whoa, whoa. Hey, hit the brakes. Bernie Schultz hooked up with a big fish. Right. And as you said, it would be number five. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Good for That's Bernie. That's five, brother. That's five. That <laughs> feels good. Just in case Bernie Schultz ever thought, like, can I, do I have power in the sport of bass fishing? I mean, we were all jammed up, ready to go to a leaderboard and go to break. And Bernie Schultz said, no, no, it is not time for a break. It is time for me to catch number five. He's been waiting a while. <clears throat> well, while he deals with that fish, evidently we have to get there. The music will play. And that bridge right there, this fishery is showing out for Brandon Polnick. And our leaderboard continues to change. Can anybody chase him down? Who's he going to be most weary of? Street? Ooh, ooh. I'd say one of my Alabama fellas might be a little bit of trouble or brand new. I, well, brand new keeps jig under these docks. I see another fish, big fish or two with him. More importantly, it is the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. I see our catering truck here. You like the spicy ketchup? You like the Whataburger? Some great, great burgers. I do. I've even started buying it in the big bottle. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, I like it so much. It's spicy Good stuff. Gonna have yeah! Another! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Keeping it going, our live coverage from day number two here at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake, Coosa River, Shelby County, Alabama. Much thanks to Dave and J.O. for some sweet on-site coverage there from, uh, well, actually from uh, from the creek, from the very creek that we were uh, watching Brandon Polinick up his total. You can take a look at the changes that have transpired in the last well, hour and a half or so, Brandon Polnick now stretching his lead out. Had it up to about four pounds ahead of Bernie Schultz, but Bernie just hit back with a little two and a half pounder to fill out his, his five fish limit there. So we have got a lot of happenings going on on the water. Will Davis spent a lot of time with Will. Uh, Will had fallen behind today. Slow, slow start compared to day number one for him. But boy, he went up, uh, up north, up river a bit. And things started to change. His outlook looking a lot brighter at this point right now. Let's get you all caught up on everything that's gone on so far today on this day number two with our Yamaha Midday Report. And we will start it out with Gary Klaus. We've been with Gary Klaus uh, all day long. And, man, he has not moved a lot, Davey. He has not moved a lot. He said he caught most of what he weighed in yesterday in about an hour on this one offshore spot. It's an uh, offshore shell bed. It's offshore, but not very deep, he said. The shallowest part of this bar that he's fishing is only about two feet deep and it extends on out to about six or seven feet. But Gary Klaus has been very patient today. You see him catch that one on a drop shot. Most of his fish uh, yesterday and today have come on the uh, swivel head jig, uh, football jig, but with that swivel head, he called it the biffle head. Uh, Tommy Biffle obviously making that lure very, very popular back in the day. Gary Klaus caught his fifth fish just a few minutes ago and it had a bait very similar to his that maybe it had eaten <laughs> earlier in the day. How about Brian New? Brian New on a mission to change the narrative of his season for 2023. Such a great couple of first years out here and really struggling up until this fish that came today. Oh, what a what a big, big fish in so many ways for Brian New. He's so excited. He threw his rod and reel in the water there. But, but who cares about rod and reels? He's got 27 others on the front deck of his boat. Yes. And 10 grand in his pocket with that bass puts him inside the cut safely. Now he can move on and try to stay in contention. Yes, absolutely. He was so excited uh, about the good day yesterday and that big fish today also. Speaking of big fish, Bernie Schultz not getting a lot of bites. Going a black buzz bait. Man. Spotted bass, Alabama spotted bass on a buzz bait. It doesn't get any better than that unless you call them up almost six pound bass, largemouth bass on a buzz bait. Just pull him on up there with the buzz bait there, Bernie. <laughs> Bernie uh, sticking to one area for most of the morning and it paid off with a couple good bites, made a move and just a little while ago, oh, he's still on the buzz bait area here with this particular fish. But then finally made a move and uh, it paid off, got his fifth fish in the boat just a few minutes ago and uh, moved him up to second place unofficially. Yeah, great, great season for Bernie. 18th 
And a progressive Bassmaster yeah. Angler of the Year points to begin okay. today, and he's probably improved on that. And Brandon Polinick, the man of the hour. So I've been watching this while we were gone, watching J.O. and Dave, and uh, it's really kind of played in his hands. Brandon Polinick, uh, just about two hours ago, two and a half hours ago, he was saying, man, this water's falling. It's really messed this up. I'm lucky to have what I've got. I'm going to probably start working my way out of here. But as he has worked his way out, he's been using his Summonbird 360, and he's noticed some offshore targets, a few stumps, a couple little pieces of brush, something out in this flat. And wow. He has found a whole different world of possibilities here with his 360 right, okay. in this creek. I doubt that we'll see him leave this creek now. And I'm telling you, now that he's got a high water situation that worked for him yesterday and falling water today, look out, Brandon Polnick is not going away. He is our reigning Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year from 2022. And uh, Brandon Polnick, a man to contend with here, but I think maybe Davey, and welcome, by the way, back to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, Tommy Sanders, Davey Hyde, uh, Ronnie Moore, and, and, and Davey, I think it, it may be still a little early to hand it over to, to Brandon, as impressive as he has been today. Oh. I mean, we have seen so many stellar moves, meteoric moves up yeah. the leaderboard, you can't count any scenario. We, we have, and uh, the one with... Uh Brian New is the one that comes to mind to me first because we saw Brian New have a good day yesterday, a little slower start this morning, but then he lost a couple of good fish, caught that big fish on a jig on a boat dock, and that's where he caught most of his fish yesterday afternoon. We thought, oh boy, here it goes. Brian New's fixing to open this things up. He's not put another keeper in the live well. Absolutely, and Bernie fighting back a little bit. So, uh, you know, it's a, the plot thickens, Ronnie. This is a genuine, good old fashioned, old school fishing tournament. Yes, there's some electronics involved with some 360 and things like that. But if you like bass fishing, you like swimming a jig, throwing a buzz bait, maybe dragging a shaky head around, just fishing some uh, tight to get areas, shallow water areas, kind of backwater places at times, Lay Lake, the Coosa Rivers for you. Every time we come here, we know it's going to be tough overall, but we know we're going to see some dramatics and some changing every single day for these anglers. This one very different from our first four events of this 23 season, but a fun one, one to watch. And we will anxiously await watching the last two hours of our coverage here as we take you back out to all 12,000 acres of Lay Lake here on the Coosa River, about midway the midway up this chain of lakes, seven lakes that make up the Coosa River chain. Yeah, for the first time uh, so far in this event, all of our anglers that have cameras are in the takeoff area or upriver from there. Yesterday we had several guys all throughout the day that were down on the lower end of Lay Lake, but not so much here today. Yeah? Yeah, of course. Oh gosh, that's not a little one. <laughs> oh my gosh, tank. It only took seven casts, 17,000 casts on that thing. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Stay on there. Stay on there. I need this fish so bad. No, 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 no. Please stay on there. Please stay on there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. My heart is pounding. I do not like where you are at right now. Coming back, coming back. We're gonna go all the way around. Going all the way around, okay, okay. Oh boy, got a look at that fish there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, she's getting tired. She's getting tired, come here, 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 come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes! Yes! Mm, we needed that bite. Golly, man. Oh, look at that thing. Whew. Gosh, we needed that bite so bad. We could have had a mega bag today. Oh. I think we're figuring a little something next year out. Friggin' a little something extra out. Mm. That's gotta be close to four pounds. 
Not quite. I thought it was even bigger than that. Gosh, I'm shaking so bad. Gets rid of a 189 though, and it's a three and three quarter pounder. That gives us over 15. What number was it? A five. Two pound upgrade? <laughs> Basically. Two pound upgrade makes that Bernie Schultz number five kind of less five? significant. Yeah. He's now, he's now extended it to 5.5 five for a lead. That one yeah. probably doesn't need the tag on it. That puts you on the big side. Oh. I was just picking my freaking wrap up to leave. That was a three and three quarter pounder. Another look at it. land in this fish. Really like it. If they just want to drop shot to isolated cover just outside of grass. I mean, it's a perfect scenario for Where these fish to be pulling out of those shallow flat areas and the next Stopping point would be the Small isolated cover. Right there. There's a little, there's a few brim beds that that stump over there. Kind of ran up on top of this one. And it's at 312, so that officially gives him the biggest limit of the day by two pounds. Over the rest of the field at 15.8. Oh, he's looking ever more formidable. Like you said, right, that, that last one. <laughs> <laughs> really that, to that's diminish what what yeah. Bernie was punching back pretty good, but man, he's going to have to pull off something pretty stellar in order to catch Brandon now. Brandon said he couldn't really duplicate what he did yesterday, but catching that five pounder earlier, that's a difference maker. But then adding, you know, he could have a five with just a couple twos and end up cashing in a, a 13 pound bag at the end of the day or something like that. And you're like, you wasted a five pounder. You add a one that's almost four in there, and now that just, mm -hmm. it makes that five pounder stretch and last a yep. little bit longer. These guys are gonna need six fish to catch him, basically. You know, he's, he's about a fish and a half ahead of these guys with the weights he's had. I am totally amazed he has had the back of this creek basically <laughs> all to itself. for two days. Totally amazing. But when you think about that, I'm sure a lot of people practice here the first day of practice right now, because it's an obvious place close to take off. You can see there's a little brim bed Listen to him here right there. Right there. And right there, right around that stump. But you don't see a lot of white dots in those ones, and they're they're pretty small. Seems like those bigger ones that have the real deep, deep holes, and then you see the little the little white icons. That's where you know know that your odds getting bit are a lot better. Whoops! Hit the wrong button. Turn the 360 off. But first day of practice, I'm sure a lot of people probably went in there. You, you still got like Murray and Santee Cooper on your mind. You only have two or three bites. Man, let's get out of here. Yeah, we got to well, do better than this. And then you just <laughs> maybe ride it off. And then you realize how tough it was. That. And That's, then yeah. do you go back and refish stuff? No, I got to go to the really Logan Dam. Really I got to go to the Lay mm -hmm. Dam. I got to. You know, that, that, that happens. Unfortunately, I'm speaking from experience there. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I'm sure your mind resists resetting. Yeah. You know, you want to you be back in the, in the, in the past somewhere. Yep. Yeah. And, and then you're driving home after day two, three, or four, and you say, gosh, <laughs> really? I'll also say this, you know, back in the back in the day, I sound like an, an old guy just set up right now. But guy. you're fishing on down a point. small place right here. You could cast on each side of the grass on the bank and whatnot, and go down and just power fish your way. And you wonder, man, they just must not be biting, or just there's not enough water in here to keep fish. But with the technology we have now and stuff, you see just a subtle stump and how many bites, you know, one a day. It's almost like these fish have nowhere else to go, so they pull up, and you can. That stump that seemed meaningless is now a highway stopping point for five pounders, you know, occasionally. And 
you find a couple places like that where you can get a bite off of, exactly all of a sudden you just maximize this way more than we used to do it, you know, just five, six, seven years ago. Too excited. And, and here's something else, in my opinion. I, I, I personally never was a release right chaser, you know, fish around yeah, the boat yeah, ramp. Yeah. Oh, but nice there's certain clean. places where you have it's to be really aware of that. And this area. is one of them. Oh, well, sure. They have tournaments there every point. day. Yeah, that is a great <laughs> and, point. And if not every day, then there's one every night in the summertime. And it, in the 90% of them, I'm going to say Trip would know, maybe 98% of them go out of this one yep. ramp. So the largest population of keeper bass most definitely has to be in this area. Yeah, Joe and Davey mentioned last night they had a small tournament. Yeah, someone may have recognized that plastic that Gary Klaus got out of the fish. <laughs> that is mine. I caught that one last night right hey. at dark. Just kidding, obviously, but there's some places you, you just have to be knowledgeable of, uh, hey, they have tournaments here every day and they all go out of one park. A recent four pounder for Alex Redwine. He's given him the second biggest bag of the day, 14-3, and he's jumped up from, uh, he was uh, 51st, he's ninth. Jay Shakira just got over 14 pounds with a three and a half pounder. He's fourth place. And Will Davis made a move during our midday break. Kenta Kimura just hit over 14 pounds as well. Brandon Polinick, man of the hour for sure, this past hour. No doubt about it, stretching out a good leap. The tune of five pounds, five pounds, five ounces, unofficially, according to Bass Track right now. Now, can this be true? The first trivia of, this, of the year? You asked him, you shall receive. Point. Okay, here's the question. What was Jay Ellis' biggest fish winning the O2 Classic? You remember that was right here at Lay Lake. Was it five pounds and four ounces? Was it 513? Was it 64 or 613? For Jay Ellis in the O2 Classic, you remember he started the final day with a 10 pound lead and didn't get bit until they started generating water. 54, 513, 64 or 613. We'll be right back. The Waterbreaker Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Right around two and a half hours fishing time left, at least for our first flighters here on day two of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. This is the day you have to be in the top 50. You got to get the job done today. Stay there if you're there. Bust in somehow if you are outside that 50 mark. And we got a trivia question. First trivia of the year at long last. Here it is now. What was Jay Ellis's biggest winning fish in the O2 Classic right here on Lay Lake? And uh, Ronnie, I'll start with you. What, which one was it? Was it 5'4", 5'13", 6'4", or 6'13"? I was I was nine and we didn't have TV at the house probably when I was. No, I'm just I'll kidding. But, uh, but I'll go somewhere in the middle of A and D. So I'm gonna pick C six four. Davey, I was actually in the O2 Classic and yeah. I'm going C six four. Six four. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna say B just for the heck of it to see what it no, is. No, join us if you want. Oh, six four is of course is exactly right. How could you forget that? That's. That's even crazier. Davey was ninth. Not only did he lead wire to wire, and it had a huge lead just after two days of competition, but to have the biggest bass each day of competition, that's domination of a classic, and we don't talk about that enough. First probably. one to ever do that. He had a 6-2, then the 6-4 on day two, and then a 4-13 on day wow. three to win. One of the great performances in a classic of all time, for I would sure. Have had a better finish had they not had the helicopter over top. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you know, you can't wave that off like a drone, can you? <laughs> 
And you were telling us during commercial that in 96 they had a pterodactyl over you guys that the cameraman wrote. Oh, yeah, right? that's, that's right. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. No, that was a whole nother deal with the elusive George Cochran. Gary Klaus has had his limit now. Swim bait. Almost an hour. If it's a bass, might be a white bass. Not huge, but yeah, it'll get rid of one of them, I think. A little scrawny when I got in there. Come here. I think I got one smaller than that. Not by much, but not sure about that either. Yeah, I believe so. That one barely measures 12, and that one's 14. He's got to weigh more. Let's see, what did I say? Red, green. Oh, green, white. You're right. Definitely notice the way we can tell oh, Gary's. Yeah. Catching them or not, you just look at his pants. I you're gonna say that. Was, most people, you look at a thumb or in your palm or something like that. Just look at his pants there. He grips those fish right between the legs there. The same one to go again, I believe. At least we know he. Is that called pants in them? Where's <laughs> pants in them? Yeah, absolutely. He does wear a nice, new, clean pair of pants every day. He's it always would show well if he turned did. out. He's always. Uh, Looking sharp on the water. We'll know he left some luggage at home before the tournament if we see him not do that in the tournament. We know right. that, hey, he's only got limited pairs of pants this week. <laughs> right. Slacking them, slacks. Definitely red in this side. Probably. Good to see Gary and Bernie out there today, looking like the consummate Absolutely. professional. Man, they oh really man. do. Just been as, doing just it for as 40 tough years. Tough and hard nosed competitors as they've always been. It's terrific. This month of May, as uh, we've been talking about May fishing, one of the greatest May anglers of all time, sitting to my right here, Davey Hyde, for sure. May is also important because it celebrates the five, this May is celebrating the 500th issue of Bassmaster Magazine. It is hard to overestimate the, the effect, the power that that magazine has had, uh, the, the influence in the sport of fishing that that magazine has had. Yeah, Ronnie, you're a little young for this, but honestly, <laughs> I mean, you know the Bassmaster oh, Magazine, 100%, 100%. obviously. But there was a time not all that long ago that was the best source, bar none, nothing even close, to tournament coverage and, and being able to feel like you were part of an organization and, and learning from the best of the best, the pros that were the big time names back in those days. I mean, that's how we developed a lot of our heroes, you know, seeing those articles and reading it and then seeing them come to fruition on the weekends on, on TV and whatnot and the tournament coverage that you guys did and were a part of. But uh, yeah, the 500th issue this October, not many publications make it to there, Tommy. And if you want to be a part of it as a fan on social media from now until July 1st, Use the hashtag Bassmaster Magazine and submit your photos either with your stack of magazines oh, okay. like I have in my closet or a fish or however Bassmaster means to you and you hmm. may be featured in the 500th issue. If you're as old as I am, you can remember before Bassmaster Magazine came along, there was just kind of outdoor sports adventure, you know, sports of field, your right. outdoor, outdoor life. So very, very different from teaching too. the way that, that Bassmaster has taught people yeah, to fish It's bass. really incredible and, and watching Brian. Gary with this fish on here, uh, I've heard Gary Klaus talk about keeping every issue of Bassmaster Magazine. That was our best tool for learning. There was nothing, that, like you say, there was like outdoor adventure type magazines, but no, you know, learning skill sets, learning yes. techniques. Yes. I, I remember reading as a, I don't know, I'm 11 or 12 year old about a flipping stick and how you would apply that and present a bait sure. close quarters with a lot of power to get the fish and, you know, went and got one. It wasn't a flipping stick, but I turned it into one, made it my flipping yeah. stick, and learned a technique of flipping, all because of Bassmaster Magazine. Yeah, a little bit bigger. No other source at that time I like that, still for that sort of information. So what's changed? Why is Gary catching them so? 
so much right now. I think the, the, the current the generation. The, okay. the, the generation, yeah. Yeah, because even though they might not have changed it, it's still 10,000 CFS coming out of Logan Martin. It's how long it takes it to get down there. And so if it's, you know, if it was maybe started an hour before takeoff, if you're pushing 20, 30,000 CFS, it's going to get down there quicker. If you're doing just 10,000, it's going to take a lot gradual to actually impact that region of the lake. Stumps. A little brim bed around that one stump. Someone got a hold of it. What are you? Get off there. I think that might have been one of the little, little brim. Had a lot going on a few minutes ago when Brandon was talking about the brim beds around these stumps. And that's, that's been key for him in the last hour and a half or so. And that's going to be key for him the rest of this tournament. Those fish pulling out of these grass mats because of the falling water, but heard him say that you can see the holes, the dishes that, that they, they make, but, but with black. the Humminbird 360, you can actually see like a white little speck in that bed, head. and that's the, the bluegill actually active on, you can, you can literally see whether those like beds have fish in them or not. And the ones that do have fish are more likely those bass to be roaming around uh -huh. them. Real key uh, on a lake like this, it's this old and silted in to look for anything hard that uh, not only the bass, but the bluegill, <clears throat> and, you know, all of your fish that spawn on the bottom are looking for that hard bottom to spawn around. So a stump and the roots off of the stump will be definitely the choice of largemouth bass to be spawning or these bluegill. Sort of like in Florida, it would be pad roots exactly. in these old natural exactly. lakes. Always looking for something yeah. hard so yeah. those eggs don't sink down in the sea. If they just laid and try to make a nest or try to fan a bed on silt bottom, it's just like trying to dig a hole in quicksand. There's just no yeah. end to yeah. it. Got to have sunlight on the eggs, yep. right? Yep. Know. So the, the depth according to water clarity, and then they're looking for hard bottom. Or something. Hard. It doesn't have to be bottom like you mentioned. It could be the roots off of a lily pad. One of the coolest examples of uh, the sunlight and the depth. Uh, fish rivers before that would be rising just like the flood levels, like rising several feet a day. And when these fish are due to spawn, they, they can only hold off so long. Mm -hmm. you know, like having a baby, it's got you to gotta happen. Go. Yeah. I've seen uh, bass fall on floating logs that would be, you know, floating on one end and sunking on the other. Really? In that depth, and that the, the log would be moving along very slowly, but it'd be the only thing that they could possibly make a nest on that wow. would be possible I've for those eggs to hatch be like being born on a train from Chicago <laughs> to Los Angeles. Like I say, it happens, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yes. Or an airplane. Yeah, you know? we, were, we were over in Nebraska, and Just my wanted. mom was in row 37 of the plane when I came out, so I guess I'm a Nebraska <laughs> native. <laughs> you old corn husker, you. I'm a traveling Alabama spotted bass. That wasn't a testimony, that was just a scenario. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't. My mama I laid could me never at, claim that. Come on, I'll talk. My mama laid me at the Logan Dam, and I really was born in Beeswax Creek. Yeah. She put me in a basket on the Coosa River grass and let me go down. <laughs> Brian New still just two fish. One of them's a giant. We do know that. Yeah, we spoke of this during our break. It would be uh, interesting. I guess would be a good way to describe uh, Brian New's attitude right now had he not had caught that one big one. Mm, that was that was important. Ouch. Uh, mm. That nose is touching. Right. It's a keeper all day long. Red.
got some movement. Has Seth Fighter. Has a, he's had his limit for about 10 pounds. He's yeah. made a few upgrades. He's up to 14 pounds today, up into fourth place. And wow. he's kind of in that seven pounds back group with a couple other guys. Come on, get a little bit bigger. Just an inch. Just an inch. Brian knew how to have a limit to go with that big one. I mean, that's so Oh, that's so fish out of to the, That's to fish out of knock him up here for sure. Yeah. Polinick on top. There he is. Big lead, 5.5. And there's Seth Fighter, as you mentioned, Rob. Big move up the leaderboard for him today, Jay Shakira. Alex Redwine still hanging in there in the top 10 after making a big move from way down there. Justin Atkins, Gary Klaus, right where he started today in sixth place. Bernie Schultz, right where he started today in second place behind Brandon Polinick, Will Davis in third. We got more to come. Plenty more fishing time on Lay Lake. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here on day two at Lay Lake, bringing it into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon. I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge, and we're getting to the point on day two. We know this says cut day. We're going to go from 104 down to just the top 50 fishing on Saturday. If you want to be in contention even more, you need to make it after the top 50 to make the top 10 into Sunday. Kind of got the same situation we had in South Carolina. We keep an eye on the locals. We had about 13 Carolinians from North and South Carolina in the South Carolina swing, and every Every single event, it was about 50-50 on how many made the cut, and then you could cut it down about 25% of them had a shot going into the final day. The Coosa River 7, there's 14 anglers from the Bassmaster Elite Series in the state of Alabama. Seven of them call the Coosa River home. I've got the four halves and the three have nots. And I hate to say it that way, but we're with just a few hours left of fishing time. These are the four that were inside the top 50 yesterday and are still inside the cut today. Matt Heron, Will Davis Jr. and Scott Canterbury all neck and neck right there just below the top 10. And then we've got David Gaston in the 30s. They're all making their way to being safe and fishing on the weekend on one of their home bodies of water. Meanwhile, we've got three guys who know the Coosa River well. We've got a couple, the two closest anglers or two of the closest anglers anglers out of about the top five to Lay Lake, Josh Stracer and Clint Davis, both down in the 90s, not where you want to be. West Logan, make, West Logan making a little bit of a comeback today in around 80th on Bass Track, but that is not the par that they want to shoot at Lay Lake. Now when we come about uh, Mercury Drain, the lake, you've got everybody that you want to use throughout the whole entire season. We only have one event in the state of Alabama. Did you save all your Alabama guys? If so, how are they faring today? Nine Alabama anglers out of the 14 are in the top 50 currently. There are five below the cut. If you save somebody like a Gerald Swindle, he's kind of swimming, treading water in the 60s, just down below that cut. You got guys like Joseph Webster leaning on that four plus pounder that I mentioned earlier in the day to keep him just inside the cut. A lot of guys like Justin Hamner vying for that cut as well. So uh, if you pick the Alabama, eight of the Alabama 14, hopefully all eight are inside the cut. If not, you got some work to do because they only have a few more hours before they uh, kind of get eliminated one by one from this tournament. Well, I picked Clint Davis, and he actually came up with one of my favorite quotes from the weigh-in. He said, I did what I promised myself I wouldn't do. I fished the entire lake twice on first day. Wow. And that, that's what gets you in trouble, I guess. It really does. Sounds like Brian knew it, like Murray. <laughs> yeah. Which was kind of wild that he said that, because when we watched Clint Davis all day yesterday, it didn't seem like he was in too much of a hurry no. at all the spots. Like It's like he fished, a, he fished a small handful of spots. Brian knew hooked up, maybe keeper number whatever, four. Whatever for four, him. I think, I think we yeah. saw him catch three. Yeah, if, yeah. Barely a keeper. But. If he stays. Please sure. be a bass, not a drum. It if feels a like bass, a drum. It's definitely a keeper, the way it's fighting. It's a drum. Mm -hmm. A foul hook drum at that. Gosh. A drum on a brush me shot. Carolina rig. So, Davey, if you hook a drum in the mouth, they, turn, they tend to do circles and turns in the water. If you foul hook them, do they swim straight? Like if you're... Oh. They just do bigger circles. Oh, bigger, you foul hook okay, them. bigger circles. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> They're like a catfish. They, they just <laughs> do circles no matter where you hook them. It's just the size of the circle. Mm -hmm. Depends on the size of the fish and where you hook them. 
Talk about those Alabama guys. Will Davis is third. Justin Atkins, the furthest Alabaman from this lake, this launch, is in seventh. And Mr. Matt Heron is ninth right now. You got a couple guys sitting right outside. Kennedy and Hamner are twelfth and thirteenth. I'd say we've done we've done, if we can, pat ourselves on the back, a fantastic job of picking variety on the day one. Six anglers trying to get different perspectives, guys who will actually show us the lake but also catch them on the lake. Will Davis coming through for a seventh yesterday. Matt Heron also just outside. David Gaston, Scott Canterbury, all of them in the cut. That was huge. And Brandon Cobb. So we had yep. most of our anglers successful yesterday. It was interesting it turned out that way since we had five out of the six were Alabama anglers of the ones yeah, we picked for the, the first time. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably see a couple oh. of the guys we saw day one on camera again, like Suchi Can you mentioned, see Karen and uh, Davis have a shot at tomorrow's mm -hmm. camera crew. Camera crew. Go to ten cameras tomorrow. Yep. Yep. An earlier start too, right? Hey. Tommy, Sanders? half an hour earlier. Yeah, half an hour earlier. We will uh, begin the broadcast. Right as on FS1 walking? at 7.30 Eastern Time, 7 rather than 8 Eastern, Eastern Time. 6.30 Central, which is right when takeoff starts. So we'll be starting FS1 with Dave Mercer leading them out from the dock. Yeah, that'll be cool. We'll go for three hours there. And then Sunday, we have five and a half hours on FS1 to, to wind down the final day. Wind up and, I guess, wind down the yeah. final day. Oh, <gasps> he came out of nowhere that time on it. Gosh, he's a pretty good sized fish. It'll definitely help. Ooh. Oh. Uh. He bumped the front of it. Let's see oh, that again. Front of it. I mean, I thought he was going to inhale it. It's a fry garter. That would have been cool new. if it was a bass. We got a good drum Another hold up. Another drum. Mm. He's coming. Oh, he turned off of it. He's going to catch him. Just be a little concerned about where he catches it. Yeah. Keeps barely nipping at it. He got, he charged it that time really good. Oh, got him. Oh. Uh, how about that? Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. Nah, that's what I was concerned about. Part of what I was concerned about. He was in the mouth. Well, they're just nipping at it like that. How's that camera? <laughs> they bumped. Oh. Uh, huh? My head, <laughs> the back of my head. No, it hit the back of my head. Ah. Dang it. Well, that game's over. He had it in the mouth too. Mm. It's okay. It's okay. Fun stuff to watch. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that game's over. Obviously, a fry garter here nipped at it multiple times. He got him here, and everything's going well, hmm? like it has all day for Brandon Paul. So much bait out of that mouth. I'm too. pretty yeah, sure like he fell and hit the hair lift. Him. He's still sitting there. Oh. Oh. So the question is, did God. the camera hit the back of his head, he or the back of his head hit the camera? <laughs> And he had it. He, had the he blamed it on the camera. The fish came off at the same, the exact second no his head hit the camera. Out. That's. <laughs> <laughs> had to hurt. He's just a psycho. I mean, he's looking at it, but he's not on it. That kind of hurt my head a little bit. 
I smashed that thing good. What I hit the lens? Golly. He's a he's gotta be a three plus pounder. Not crazy how he just wouldn't even, he just like freaked out when the drop shot was down there in a not good way. But the glide, he's like losing his mind. He kind of spun on my drop shot, it looks like. You gonna eat it? No? It's fine. We might get a second shot. Huh? He's, I mean, he's still hanging around. I think I figured out where his sweet spot is a little bit more. He just, his, his mouth hurts just a little bit. It just hurts a little. What do you do, just chase off the little bluegill? That was cool to watch. It is one of the coolest things in the sport fired up of fishing. Like that, is it? If you've never experienced the pitching oh, at a pitching at a fish, go. pitching at a fish, learning more about it, finding that sweet spot, and then when that fish turns that's and you see the gills flare, and it's gill. your bait gets sucked. That's one of the coolest. If you can visually you see it, it's awesome. Big bait. Maybe this. <laughs> Maybe this will get him fired up. And now we're able to share this on Bassmaster Live, but talking about the days of the magazine you could read that all day long yeah, but until there. you mm. see it yourself you don't really understand maybe those fish I don't know, her react. face hurts a little bit i don't and huh hit the side of my boat my head hit the camera we both got headaches i don't know Oh well. You know, I have to pick on Brandon a little bit. You know Brian Evie was standing and pointing straight down on him if he was able to hit his head on that camera. Swing just because Brandon's not the tallest fella. <laughs> so uh, you're right, Tommy. Golly. They hit it the exact same time. His exactly. head hit the camera it's and the like fish the shock came off. Of him hit, like knocked the fish off the hook. Yeah. And that's why the sport of fishing is so cool, Dave. You talk about the, the double yesterday with Will Davis. You thought you'd swing him in and there, the fish was barely hooked. You try to get in as quick as possible. If that plays out, you know, he could land it. Right. But there's other times swinging it, you know, it's just, it's so hard to tell how good a fish has the bait. You think they have it good and all of a sudden they turn and it pull, you know, pulls loose. On that, right. you knew that uh, you got a when he did hook that fish, oh, it was gonna be just a nip. Uh, <laughs> a I'm not saying he did there. anything wrong, but uh, you knew it was gonna like not be even, a... Not even staying in the same place. Window of execution was dirty very dog. very short on dirty hook dog. to have to land right, yes. you know, timing. Well, Tommy, at least he's got one he can stop on tomorrow morning if he decides to, yeah. to not avail yeah. today. As long as there's pride and need guard. He's going to keep trying, but. Yeah. May have gotten personal here with him today. He's not going <laughs> to yeah. wait until tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Someone needs to yell, you, you don't need that today. <laughs> right. There's a seared tail. Why is she staying over there to the right now? A lot of good action. Yeah, man. Brandon Pollen is responsible for so much of it in the last couple of hours. Stretch himself out to a five pound, five ounce lead. Ahead of Bernie Schultz and Will Davis a couple of pounds behind that. Seth Fighter, big move for him up the leaderboard. And then once he gets to the top 10, he keeps going. Big day for him. Jay Shakurik, one of the biggest days of all our competitors. 
Limit Wise, Gary Klaus, Justin Atkins, Brian New hanging in there, Matt Heron, and Stetson Blaylock. We got plenty more to come, about an hour and a half's worth of fishing time when we come back. Yes! Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Plenty of action here on day number two of competition. Four days of competition that make up the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. Lay Lake with so much history here and of course uh, your personal history as one of the 104 anglers can be enhanced by you making it into the top 50 at the end of the day. That's what it's going to take to be able to fish on the weekend here. You definitely want to do that. Big performance today, staying strong after a strong day number one, over 19 pounds on day number one. Our marathon peak performance, uh, Davey, there he is, Brandon Polinick. Yeah, you look at look at this for Brandon Polinick, like you said yesterday, had such a great day and was, I think he was honestly telling the truth. He did not know if he could go out and catch even 10 pounds a day. So he was right on par to kind of have that day, 734. Uh, a two pounder, then a two four at 8.39. And then he goes for about an hour and 15 minutes and was about to leave. The water was falling. We heard him talking about, man, this is kind of going away. And then he catches a five pounder, follows up with a two four and a, and a 3.12. As that water started to fall, he started to use his Hummingbird 360. And that is really what gave him a chance to be marathon. Peak performance, Brandon Polinick, uh, catching a few off the bed, still messing with this one fry garter, but Finding those fish offshore using electronics has been huge for him today. Hmm. 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 Think you were right, Ronnie. It might be best for him to wait. Talk to this guy a little bit tomorrow. Yeah. He'll still be there. It's like two different approaches. It's like, you know, he the water keeps dropping, he could be gone tomorrow. And Bolinick's like, if I could bust another around, 18 pounds or something. And anything anymore. 19 I think he's, and an 18, and you're like, I'm, I'm way ahead of right. the game. I think this is a fry garter. Unless someone catches him, he'll still be there in that area with the fry. I don't think he's you know locked in on a bed no, the way sure. he was chasing that bait and the way he's not really wanting to buy a bait on the bottom. She keeps going, sitting back in that same Unless little it would spot, drop, but it's not know. the same spot that she's sitting yeah, before. Yeah, if so it was weird. significantly more than what it's projected at, yeah. Coosa River is special. Looking at this, this four box, like, is Bernie Schultz in Florida? Uh, is Matt Airy in the Carolinas? It's like everything looks, looks totally different every time you turn. The options are plentiful. <laughs> Come on, I see you sitting there. Look at the tail on that damn thing. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. That's probably oh, a grass garb. This yeah. might be why Bernie didn't have a good attitude toward this specific <laughs> fish. They got redfish in the lay lake? <laughs> nope. No ice spot, Ronnie. He's vacuuming Hang stuff around. up. Coosa yeah. River redfish. That's shallow. Oh, I don't think Bernie has a clue that he's in second place unofficially. I was <laughs> just about to ask you what he, yeah. you think he guesses he's at. Come on, BLD, do it. Not sure, but I just would be willing to bet he doesn't think he's top mm -hmm. two. 
this morning when he popped that three and a half and a five, he had to know mm -hmm. that he had jumped on up there. Mm -hmm. but. It's one of those deals until you bag your fish up at the end of the day, you're like, man, I got six bites today. I'm sweating out here. And then you're like, hmm, I might be in a better spot than I thought when you start bagging, you start to remember. Right. A little AOI watch. Brandon Cobb caught a four pounders up to where he started, 23rd place. But the guys closest to him, John Cox and Carl Jacobson, they better step it up a little bit. They don't have their limits today, and they've fallen a little bit. He could he could leave here with a better than 55 point lead. Wow. Rivette's hanging tight as well in the top 40. Stay up there for over half the season in the top five of AOI would be impressive. So Cobb was, was it 18 or 28 points he was above? 18. I, I just remember the eight. Came in 18, 18 points. points. Over Cook. Over Cook. No. I'm gonna come back there and take a leak. Cook's fighting to make it just to the top 50. He's 43rd right now for Cook, having a better day today, 11-4. But he's still at about 20 pounds <laughs> even. So he's below that projected number, we think. Little pecker heads. Are we live? Yeah. <laughs> Who was he talking about? Which angle? No, I'm just kidding. Something. I had something. Huh. That was really weird. I don't know what that was. and four regular season events, plus made the cut at the Classic this year. Good way to fill a limit. Don't want a Texas rig worm or a shaky head. But you're going to get a lot of those little small Coosa River, Alabama spotted bass. Yeah. About those eight, ten inches are going to be trying to get a piece of that worm also. Seen him swing and miss several times today. Huh? Oh. I feel like we've uh, seen our fair share of the five pounders that have been caught out there on Lake Lake today. I think we've seen three. Is that right, David? We've seen three live on camera and we've uh, on Bass Track, seen more than we saw all day long yesterday. Today, by midday, got to start with Brandon Paulnick, BNC Redline, on point. Brandon Paulnick getting it started this morning, and this is my personal favorite, just because of the way he landed. Just grab that buzz bait <laughs> blade and pick that five pounder in there, Bernie Schultz. Bernie catching this over five pounder. And then, well, I don't know. This one might be my favorite. Yeah, he I have a new favorite. This, this was. <laughs> This was this uh, had it all. This was a man that has not had a good start to his year, and this is the fifth <laughs> tournament, and he knew that was ten thousand uh, dollars. Just threw his rod and reel in. <laughs> what I also love about those three catches, guys, is that we saw one on a finesse style, a little off the bank. We saw one on a dock, and we saw one on top water on a grass line. A yeah. lot of different things at Lay Lake can get you a five pounder. Take a look at the VMC on point. Three plus pounders, all the way down at dam. I saw a three twelve and a and a four. You work your way up. And where did we talk about maybe the best population of fish might be on this lake? Mm -hmm. uh, right around there where we see Brandon Polnick and Brian New spend a lot of their day. Bernie Schultz not far from there. Work your way on back up. You have a, there's a five pounder, a five two, a five four. Excuse me, a three four. Then of course you're gonna see 
a few more of them up there at the uh, Logan Martin Dam, just to the side of it where we saw Matt Heron spend a lot of his day there yesterday. And Will Davis, Jr. Yeah, the other five pounders today are Kenta Kimura and Cole Sands. You like that landing from Bernie, huh, Dave? Ah, uh, it's special. It was special. That's another way to market that uh, that buzz bait. It's it's a bait. It's a handle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's Boga special, grip. It's yeah. that's what it looked like. Like that's the way you land a snook. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Some toothy, toothy critter. critter. Hey, he got him. Yeah, it's in the box. <laughs> Speaking about Heron. Circles need to get a little quicker. I think I just spooked her that time. I don't think she liked that much. Where'd you go? Oh, you're sitting in there. Maybe that's what I need to do to fire you up. Spin you around a couple times. Spin you around like we're on a dance floor. Well, let's dance. Get out of here, B. Yeah. Chase and Christy, uh, very much like Scott Canterbury yesterday, just sticking to this shoreline yeah, vegetation, yeah. mixing up with baits, but. Hasn't had any size show up for him. Nope. Five pounder would put him in a whole different Boy, level. sure would, wouldn't it? I don't think Gary has moved all day, has he? I think he has. Like He's taking a few steps. <laughs> yeah. Are you, oh, you're talking about his bow. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. No. It doesn't seem the like he's moved. a little bit too, I guess. But. <laughs> now, granted, I, when I showed the map at the screen, unironically, it was that general region of the river. And how wide it is with the same depths, it's such a, such a gradual depth change until it dumps into the river. That's a long, wide, kind of ledge, flat deal that if there's a couple different objects on there, it's worth the float up and the troll back up, or the float down and the troll back up and peeking around on the edges, a little deeper, a little shallower. Two, two very different parts of the lake, but what Brandon Polnick was doing earlier with his 360, looking for those shale beds, Hard spots, uh, Gary Klaus is doing the same thing out on the main lake. Surprised Brian New hasn't had any more bites under these boat docks today, but it's been a little cloudy, hazy today. Uh, not quite as much as yesterday, but almost. Mm. Brandon Pollock certainly has been the dominant performer so far. In this tournament, leading yesterday, it didn't take him too long to regain the lead that he lost early today, so he is sitting in good shape right now. Seth Fighter and Jay Shakur, look at those two names, both of those anglers with 14 pounds plus today. Second only to Brandon Polinick as far as five fish limits and 
A lot of interesting developments out there and more fishing to come. Yeah! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Uh, the weekend is almost upon us. Hope you're having a great Friday. We sure appreciate each and every one of you. You've been able to spend some time with us on Bassmaster Live as we cover day two action at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. Full field out there fishing for 50 spots in tomorrow's semifinal Saturday. Still got Brandon Polnick, our reigning progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year on top. Thanks to a five pounder and one that's about three and a three and a quarter that he caught well, just right after noon local time. And we get out to Polnick right now. I mean, you have a really good one right in front of you. I just don't think she's acting right to be able to, to get her to go. Frank Talley there, 14th from 53rd place. He's got a nice 13 and a half pound bag today. Good day for Frank Talley. Yeah. She's not, she's not staying in there nearly as good as what she was. He's another pro with a major win on the Elite Series in the state of Alabama. Yep. Mm. That was the Fall 2020's COVID our yeah. fall tour. Yes, cool. sir. Yeah. Such a cool season. Gunnersville, you know, the upper end of Gunnersville. Yeah, we resumed the season in June at Lake Eufaula in Alabama, and then we had our northern swing, and then we ended this ended the event or the season down south with a yeah, three in a row down there. Up. Little Hibbisy one, Chickamauga. Four down there. I'm sorry, we had Gunnersville, Paul and Santee. Santee. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lee Livesey, Chickamauga, and then Patrick Walters, the record set in Lake Fork. A good job to finish that season, if you look back on uh, things. Very proud of that, actually. Yeah. I'm proud of BASS for making it happen. Yep. Yeah, and the hosts and states and communities that people yes, were skeptical absolutely. about. quit on that spot. Allowed it all to take owe place. Them a, owe them much gratitude. <laughs> Okie dokie. Under a lot of strict regulations up in New York when we went up there, too. For yep. I had you under strict regulations here, Suge. Did well, you? I did. Oh. Ooh, Draconian, you might say. Okay. I know when we went up there, I was on site for that one. That nurse gave everyone a COVID test, and I was like, I thought you were supposed to be taking my nostril, not the back of my head. It was like a, <laughs> the camera hitting, <laughs> falling in the back of his head when she jammed. Yeah, fish that. come off while they were doing that. Oh, my God. See you again tomorrow, best. Came undone. What well, part of my well. nose is where she's trying to put this damn, excuse me, <laughs> rich. That's my brain, lady. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. First time I've ever done that. Yeah, tell me where Bernie's sitting right now, second place points. He's 19th in AOI. He came in 36th. Yeah. So he really solidified his classic chance. It would be his 10th classic, too, if he makes he's it. He's normally one who comes through Please with a clutch do cross finish that line. the season because we have smallmouth St. Lawrence. He's always got a kind of consistent Lawrence. finish there. <laughs> so it makes this work. We've got 30 minutes left hey, in our live coverage What I've coverage learned today. is that if it's your time to win, none of that stuff matters. It's all just peanuts. Brandon moving on from that yeah. fish now. Might be glad he did tomorrow morning if he pulls yeah. up there and catches it in the down. first few casts. I don't know. I'd rather have that fish I don't be know, a maybe full like four Texas pounds for me rather than being a pound and a half. Floor, you know, it's like no big my deal. My total weight, you know, today with the coal. I don't buy it. He's uh, I'm gonna cruise around here, see if we can see any more little sneaky brim beds anywhere.
wonder if Wes saw the zombie bass. I'll have to hear more about that. Yeah. <laughs> Good look at big holes like a shell bed. Brandon Paul makes 360. Guys, with all the rain that we had in practice at Lay Lake, welcome into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon. All of that rain, guys, that we had, we expect maybe a lot more current flow, maybe some dirtier water, maybe some uh, different adjustments and strategy there. But as I show you at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge, we've really had minimal current this week. They haven't really moved much water. They're not even gonna, they're gonna move a lot less on the weekend, but really what the tentative schedule is, and I'll get into that in just a moment, uh, it, has, it has varied and has not been what you'd expect. But let's start at the bottom of the lake. What it currently is doing right now at the bottom of the lake at the Lay Lake Dam, Four generators running, like we mentioned, they have six turbines there at the Lay Lake Dam, but they're much smaller capacity than the Logan Martin one. So the four number is fine. It shows that a bunch are moving, but it's the it's the cubic feet per second. We're looking at 21,500 cubic feet per second. They're moving uh, decent. That's kind of seems like the average number for the CFS for them moving it out of Lay Lake. Then we go to Logan Martin at the top of the lake where we're seeing a lot more anglers make that run up the river. One generator running. 10,000 CFS is basically what it's been since the start of this event from the final day of practice to now it's still just at 10,000 so status quo there but we look at the tentative schedule and I'm going to emphasize the word tentative because you can you can kind of plan your day out based on the tentative schedule and it not work out that way and looking at the operating schedule today at midnight they turned on one generator at noon they were supposed to turn on two it is now uh, 115, 130, and it's still just one on there. So the tentative did not plan out perfectly today. Still just one generator. They're going to keep it at one supposedly till six at six o'clock. They're going to shut them completely off at 11 tomorrow. Substantially less. We've had four or five different tentative windows tomorrow. Only three windows, and I believe that one is at uh, midnight. 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. tomorrow, and they're supposed to be at most two turbines. So if it ends up going from tentative two turbines to uh, official one turbine, we may not see that uptick in current up at the dam where we maybe thought more players would be. Matt Heron's been one up there, Kobe Krieger. We'll see if any of those guys make our top 10 and kind of get a good gauge visually of what the dam looks like at the top. But if they're dumping a lot more, twice as much out of the bottom as they are bringing in up top, might be a big game changer going the weekend with this water level. We'll see a lot more people evacuating the Paint Creek Costco. and Waxahachie region. A lot of boats down there, but Justin Atkins is the only one really far south that's in our top 10. Saw significantly less three pounders down there as Brandon Polonix got Stay one. Let's not kick that in the water this time. Not a giant one. Didn't think this fish was going to help, but now it looks a little bigger. It might help him. He's got a two pounder in there. His live well. Nah, he's not going to help. Yeah. He ate it really good. Do doctor surgery again. Look at this. You shoot down there. So he's got it in there, go behind the gills, get a hold of it, rotate, pops right out. He's good to go. He's not gonna help though. Thought he was bigger when I saw him. Two, 216 is our smallest. Good job with fish care there, Brandon Palmer. Yeah, that was pretty deft work. Not gonna make Appreciate it. Appreciate the attitude as always, buddy. If I were Brandon Polnick now, I would be, con because he's got something going on in the in the grass and then outside of it in this area. Really be thinking, man, I can 
potentially win this tournament in the back of this need creek. To get out of here and if I go have it to, to myself the next two days. Be interesting to see if any of the other competitors of his go in there tomorrow. But We've kind of it expanded is also this little area. So. Oh, that's there right. Could be that's another thing. To have. You've got to figure. But I feel like I need to need to expand more. Really surprised there's not a good brim bed right here. I guess it's just up on the bank shallow. Scott Canterbury making a move. Started day 40 30, he's up to 17th. Just called up to 12 and a quarter or so. Our Alabama guys. We've got about zero sunshine today. Oh, you gonna eat that? Oh, gosh. It hasn't Looks gotten like as warm as they were predicting today right either, no, has it? I don't think she doesn't. I thought he swam up and swam down too. I thought Brandon was copying me when I asked you if you were going to eat your Chick-fil-A cookie the other, earlier in the day, Davey. You going to eat that? I have no idea what you're talking about, Ronnie. <laughs> Chick-fil-A cookie. <laughs> Didn't get the wind like we had yesterday either. No, no, not so far. That's kind of a big accelerator, not only just wind on regular lakes, but when you're on the Coosa River and you might not get the current generation, the actual water flow movement, if you can kind of get a wind direction that goes along with the current, it can kind of make it feel like there's some more and some fish may get more active than they would have without it and solely relying on current. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I figured places maybe like the Narrows, when you get down lake and it's more like a lake and less like a river, when you get down lake in the narrows, it necks down and you can really feel some current coming through that region of the lake right. sometimes. Yeah, and that's, you, if, if you need it, I mean, it right there. It almost could be looks useful. Like there's maybe one sitting on the backside. No, it's just. Just another stick up right there. There's lots of bait and stuff out here. Looks like one cruising right there. It's that little hard spot I caught that one on earlier. Don't forget, we're concerning ourselves with the top 50 today. Right now, if we were to stop fishing, Austin Felix would be the last man in. And right below that would be David Williams, Drew Benton, and Brandon Lester. Benton and Lester have done great jobs today. I mean, getting themselves up near that 50 point. 12-8 for Lester, 11-6 for Drew Benton. But Brandon Polinick, as far as our top 10 are concerned, still looking great in terrific shape right now. Significant lead over Bernie Schultz, Will Davis. Slow start to his day, but he's come back. Fighter and Shakur at another couple of anglers with good days here on day number two. We got some more fishing to come. We'll take a break and be right back. The Waterburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power pole. Skeeter boats. Progressive insurance. And by Rapalon. Got a few more minutes of fishing to show. Oh, there he is. Who's a good boy? That, that boy right there. Ooh. Yeah. Get away from my pontoon, will you? 
We're gonna show you some dogs first. I think that dog's got Wes's drone. <laughs> it might be. It, it might have Gary exactly Klaus's rage bugs as well. If we, <laughs> if we me all right, trivia. Second trivia question of the year. Here we uh -oh. go. What president signed the bill to create Lay Dam? Was it McKinley? Was it uh, Teddy? That would be Teddy Roosevelt. Was it uh, William Howard Taft or Woodrow Wilson? William McKinley, Teddy Roosevelt. Davey, who you got? Woodrow Wilson. I, uh, I was not in that classic, I can tell you that. <laughs> we, do we take our picks now or we're going to wait a little yeah, while? Yeah, yeah, I think you can give your pick now. Yeah, we're going to pay going, it off. I'm uh, going B, T. Roosevelt. He's a big conservationist. How about you, Ronnie? He well, was. considering Woodrow Wilson probably didn't successfully build anything, I'll probably go with Teddy Roosevelt as well. Wow. All right. Okay. I'm, I think I think it is Teddy Roosevelt. And it is Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. Yes. Damn. He's he signed off on 1907 and the dam started operation. Oh, it was online by yeah. 1914. Man, it goes way back. That That's is the only reason Babe Ruth only played in five games his rookie year was he was too busy fishing Lay Lake. Oh, Instead yeah. It was on fire right for, when they opened it up. <laughs> they built a whole that. town for the workers to build the dam. I mean, they That's kept awesome. around. People came in from Birmingham and really? visited down there. Oh, yeah. That's probably why it only Recreation. Happened. That's kind of a big deal in 1917. 14, when was it? 14. 14. Yeah. 14. Pre-World War I. Sorry, rest in peace, Woodrow Wilson. I just had to give a little dig there for past history. Teddy Roosevelt was a big hunter and fisherman. Yes, that's why I picked him. I really yeah. didn't know, but I, did, I could relate him to being a conservationist and caring yes. about parks yeah. and wildlife. One of the great presidents, for sure. I loved his role in the movie Night at the Museum with Ben Stiller. He was great in that National That was Museum. Robin he came Williams, to is that yeah. who played him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his own room in the uh, gun museum up there in Springfield at the big uh, Wonders of Wildlife and Bass Pro Shops complex. Mm. Will Davis, three pounder. Uh-oh, second 14, place now. Yeah. Brandon Pollock's not probably afraid of anybody, but man, when he goes from being Seventh to second, and you're like, uh-oh, he's coming. He was in third for quite a while, and I thought, boy, he's kind of hit a wall there, but he, he did just make a move, didn't he? Yeah, and we do not have Brian New's third fish on Bass Track. I noticed that. Well, it is only like, just add was, nine it, it ounces to his just a squeaker, yeah. yeah. It was, it was a, a pound, maybe. Get him maybe fourth place. I was looking, Will Davis had a couple three-pounders, a couple calls after we left yesterday, I think. There were several anglers that did. Uh, oh, yeah. Some nice ones, yeah. John Cox. John Cox had wow. several. I'll say this. Having Will Davis on camera yesterday, we'll probably have him on tomorrow. Yep. Based on where he's currently at on the private map that we have, uh, he might have done a lot of his damage in places we saw yesterday, like late in the afternoon. Like he might be living there more, yeah. maximizing it today. Yeah. Not hitting the spots and running and gunning like Doesn't yesterday. Doesn't look like he has necessarily put them. The ones that are on bash track are the ones. I'm going to get dropped on by a bird. Well, he was fun to follow yesterday. He, he was. Showed us he a was. lot of different things. He's got he a lot of ways to catch them here on Lake. Must be his little yeah. ones down totally there. Totally agree. Good one to have in our, our 10 angler lineup tomorrow. And even though Brandon and Bernie have been the leaders today, I kept my own Will Davis climbing up after the slow start, climbing up that leaderboard, and I thought, ooh, he's, he's gonna be hard to beat, but I really like what I've seen Brandon be able to expand and catch those fish oh, offshore man. back in the back of this creek. Um, did you talk to Brandon last night? I did not. No, I wonder if he's really got confidence in much else. Because it's one of those things, if you know that you can catch them in the back of here, I'm going to spend some time, but do you Duh. have somewhere else to go? That's the big deal. Yeah. Small fish. I just think he's, uh, 
He's learning more and more about this need. creek, the back of this creek, Deeper as he right spent now. more and more time there, knowing that there's a lot more to it than then just looking at these grass beds. I haven't caught a big one off this bridge yet, but I've caught quite a few keepers off of it. It's certainly not tidal, but you've mentioned a couple times, it's almost like a tidal river with the uh, generation at both ends or not. Uh, and as you spend more time in one area, you learn that rather than running around the whole lake. Very similar to, you choose Place to stay in one area and up. adjust uh, depending on water level, what you can do in that area, or do you and try to run and chase the, the, the conditions that you want it. as they move up and down the river system. One of the local apartment complexes there on Brandon Ponick's screen. Careful, you didn't take one on the lens. Penthouse. <laughs> Tuesday, I was under the Spring Creek Bridge at Gunnersville, and it's definitely a apartment <laughs> complex yeah. of those barn swallows there. <laughs> no housing shortage there. <laughs> yes. There's a keeper for Jason. Much needed. Better one for Jason. Yes, definitely will help. Old frog. Falling down to 22nd place. Five for seven, four. You imagine he's got a little bit better than that, but we'll upgrade with this for sure. 13 ounce fish. I'd like to see the diversity that we see in a tournament like this. We talked about it yesterday morning starting out. I thought it'd be fun to watch, but it's also interesting to watch Jason Christie. You know he's a threat anywhere we go, any time of the year, oh, but yeah. especially this time of the year in the spring. And you can bet he's gonna have a walking top water bait, a frog, which is just a different version of that. And you know, it's gonna be a spook, a frog, a spinner bait, and a swim jig. Yeah. Those four rods are going to be on the front deck, and 12 ounce or the 13 ounce? He's going to be in contention. The black, white snake. Might be his best fish of the day right there. Yeah, it helped him a lot. Jason Chris can catch him up north as well. We know that, so he's, yes, he wants to do well here, but uh, he's, he can certainly get some big time points as we head into the final third of the season. We're about to the halfway point of our Whoa. season right now, and it will be halfway done when we finish the weigh-in today. Begins at four Eastern, three local time here in Alabama, and you can see it right here on Bassmaster.com. Remember, we're starting a little earlier tomorrow, 30 minutes earlier. 6.30 a.m. Central, 7.30 Eastern. We start on FS1 for three hours, followed by some live mix, followed by some on-site coverage with Dave. Uh, whoever was gonna be his uh, analyst tomorrow should be interesting to find that out. But, oh, hey, I'm sorry. I'm stepping on the music, Davey, once again. <laughs> oh, that music uh, is pretty fun to watch this one. Brian New, who had a slow start to his season, unusually slow. He's the guy that won his first Bassmaster Elite Tournament. But that's a way to turn it around. A good day yesterday when Brian knew, and this morning, puts this big five pound, 10 ounce bass in his boat as he throws his rod and reel out of the boat. If you watch real closely here, both hands to get this fish because he knows that's a $10,000 fish no matter what. Brian knew you had to be our power pole replay of the day, not just the morning, but of the day. Thought for a second there that promo shot of the, the underwater by the dock. I thought we were going to see Brian New's rod under the, like he was going in after it, you know, we were going to. It is, you know, we've seen that a few times a day and 
fun to watch it every single time. But mm -hmm. He could care less about that rod and reel. No. He was it's, getting my hands on that fish. That was a moment he's been waiting <laughs> all for right. all season. We're gonna make we say some key fish late. Justin Hanner just landed a four pounder. He's tied uh, Palmick for the big bag of the day, about 15 and a half pounds. He's in fourth place. Wow, man. What a move he has made. Where did he start this morning? It was way back. Hamner, oh, uh, Hamner was 29th, 29th. Starting, starting the day, but. 29th to fourth, still a big move. I thought it was a little farther back than that. There's, I mean, there's a ton of guys. From 29th to 10th is only two and a half pounds, so that's. Yeah. Hamner, another Alabama guy. I mean, sorry, a pound and a half from 29th to 10th. Yeah, so it's like we talked about yesterday morning when they were saying, ah, it's just a 12 inch or it's a baby, I shouldn't even put him in the live well, that sort of thing. There'll be some guys driving home saying, man, if I'd have caught one 12 inch spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. one pound to my weight, that would be huge. Davis, Hamner, Atkins, and Heron, Alabamans in the uh, top 10 right now. Josh Trashner, if that's correct, only two fish a day, three pounds. Yes. Mm. Hard to wrap your head around. Really so is. strong. Such a strong angler. Jason Christie's got at least the better part of an hour. We'll have to up his game a little bit, climb a little more up the leaderboard. But boy, we have seen some guys up there oh, came today. Now. And especially our leader, Brandon Pollinick. Yeah. Brandon Polinick started out this morning, and I think he was being honest with us. I don't think he was sandbagging, saying, I don't even know if I could go catch nine or 10 pounds. I think I can catch a limit, but they might not even weigh 10 pounds. It's been very different. Bernie Schultz, glad to have a camera with him today, especially this morning. He caught this five pound largemouth. He caught a three and a half pound spotted oh, bass on a buzz bait. Oh my gosh. Certainly always hey. fun to watch. And Brandon Polinick is the one that's been able to just keep yes. on upgrading throughout the day. He said about halfway through the morning, he said, you know, I think I'm figuring something out out here. I tend to believe him when he says something like that. He is it's scary when he figures something out. All up inside He's one sharp that guy. Yeah. God almighty. <laughs> oh, more of that, please, for the remainder of this tournament. So great to have you with us here today on Bassmaster Live. We have had so much fun on this historic well, well uh, appreciated place. Lay Lake, our weigh-in starts right here on Bassmaster.com at four o'clock Eastern time. Shortly thereafter, that's when the first flight checks in. We will see you again. Remember, 30 minutes earlier, 7.30 Eastern time. We'll see you on FS1 tomorrow.